food, awesome margaritas, and a wonderful family atmosphere. Fernando's, Omaha's favorite Mexican for more than 30 years. Forget the drive to Colorado or Missouri. Dub into any Omaha 42 degrees and indulge in a curated cannabis experience. Premium flower, cannabis, pre-rolls, and cannabis accessories paired with an elevated customer service experience. All are waiting for you at 42 degrees. From novices to connoisseurs, we are here to elevate your cannabis journey. 42 degrees, your destination for top-tier cannabis, second-to-none product selection, and exceptional service. By your mob's house. I'm Bridget Condon with NFL Network Now on the Westwood One Radio Network. It appears the Chiefs have found their next veteran quarterback to back up Patrick Mahomes. According to NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport, Carson Wentz is signing a one-year deal with the back-to-back Super Bowl champs. Wentz's NFL career is set to continue with his fifth team in the past five seasons. In other Chiefs news, Ian also reporting running back Clyde Edwards-Hilaire agreeing to terms on a one-year deal with the team. Edwards-Hilaire had 803 rushing yards in his rookie campaign in 2020, but lost the starting job to Isaiah Pacheco midway through the 2022 season. And NFL Network insider Mike Garofolo reporting the Seahawks signing wide receiver and kick returner LaVisca Chenault. The former second round pick of the Jaguars spent the past two seasons with the Panthers. This has been NFL Network Now on the Westwood One Radio Network. Getting your biggest tax refund from Jackson Hewitt can lead to some spirited reactions. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Jackson Hewitt is so sure they'll get you your biggest refund that if they don't, you get your money back plus a hundred bucks. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Switch to Jackson Hewitt and we'll beat what you paid last year, even if you filed online. Hewitt, yeah! Ain't nothing to it. Switch to Jackson Hewitt and pay less for tax prep, guaranteed. Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. On the battlefield, there's a saying America's military men and women live by. Never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Off the battlefield, Wounded Warrior Project operates with the same goal. Wounded Warrior Project was created to help our men and women returning home with the scars of war, whether those scars are physical or mental. Wounded Warrior Project, we never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Learn more about what we do at WoundedWarriorProject.org. Like eating out? Like saving money? Then get to Cobb's at 180th and Center, Shadow Lake Town Center, or 72nd and Jones for their daily specials. Tuesday is $3 off all burgers and sandwiches. Wednesday, buy any specialty pizza and get a one-topping 50% off. Then Thursday, all wings are a dollar each when you order 10. And this just in, all Cobb's locations now offer their own delivery service. Click CobbsPizza.com to see the menu. Cops, pizza, and so much more. News Talk 1290 Coil is your radio home for Omaha Storm Chasers baseball. Proud AAA affiliate of the Kansas City Royals. Tune in to hear every pitch, every hit, and every out as the Chasers play at Warner Park and across the International League in 2024. With the voice of the Omaha Storm Chasers, Nick Batters, on News Talk 1290 Coil. The Storm Chasers travel to Columbus to take on the Clippers. First pitch is scheduled at 515. Listen to the game on your home for Storm Chasers baseball. 1290 Coil. Progressive presents good news, bad news, dumb news, then great news. Good news. A letter in your mailbox says you could save money bundling your home and auto insurance with Progressive. Bad news. You saw it after your teenager backed the car into the mailbox. Dumb news. A new mailbox, basically a box on a stick, costs up to 400 bucks. Great news. You decide to see if you could save money bundling at Progressive.com and go with paperless mail instead. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency on earth. And if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes and further rate hikes are expected. Most people don't know it, but the IRS adds interest charges to your tax debts daily. So if you owe the IRS today... You'll owe even more tomorrow, and it doesn't stop until you get right with the IRS. The good news is getting right can start with one phone call to Optima Tax Relief, America's number one tax relief firm. Optima's tax professionals specialize in the Fresh Start Initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800-348-0269. 800 
Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. A lot can happen between falling in love with a house online and owning it. Between imagining living there and breathing in your new home for the first time. Having an advocate who can help you navigate the complex world of financing, inspections, negotiating, analyzing the market, and talking through any anxieties that may pop up, that can make all the difference. That's what the expertise of a Realtor can do for you. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors and bound by a code of ethics. Because that's who we are. Omaha Maverick Baseball is coming off a series victory over 2023 College World Series qualifier Oral Roberts. And the Mavs are ready to take on crosstown rival Creighton on Tuesday, April 9th at Tal Anderson Field. Don't miss this classic matchup. Plus, it's $2 Tuesdays when all Pepsi products and Bush Light cans are $2 when the gates open until the third inning. Get your tickets for this game and all baseball and softball games by calling 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash ticks. 1620 The Zone. Swung on and there's a high fly ball. Deep right field. Way back there. Home run, Bo Naylor. And just like that, the Guardians are in front. 3-0 on Naylor's first home run of the season. Suzuki drives one in the air to left center field. Back goes Doyle. That ball is back, and it's going to be gone for a home run. It landed in the basket, a line smash by Seiya Suzuki. And now the one-two pitch on the way to Cody Bellinger. Hit high in the air. Deep right field. Get out the tape measure. Long gone. Off the scoreboard, and Cody Bellinger with his first home run of the year. The 2-0 pitch. Garcia punches it high in the air, deep right center field. O'Hearn into the gap, out of the track, at the fence. It's over his head off the bottom of the wall. Lofton's already at third. He rounds the bag and comes in to score standing, and Garcia sprints to third. He's there standing. A two-out RBI triple for Michael Garcia. Live from 50th and Capitol Avenue in the Big O. This is Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. 1620thezone.com and 1620thezone TV. Now here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy. You're a good guest. All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome in on a uh, Wednesday. Just going to get it out of the way right away. Colorado Rockies are not very good. They're not very good at all. I think that's uh, that's going to be a statement that will ring true uh, for 162 games. Uh, they are they are a bad baseball team that is off to their uh, worst start, but there is a uh, local baseball team that is off to their best start since uh, 1986. Welcome in everybody. Uh, we did have baseball last night, Nick. The weather the, the weather held up. It was it was cold, um, but we had baseball last night, and we had Creighton win again over Nebraska. This whole baseball basketball thing is actually becoming into a it's it's getting a little bit one-sided here and that was the one thing that we were I was leaving the, the ballpark with John and, and Rob Anderson last night and of course I, I don't think Rob could help himself making the mention to basketball as well as they've been successful in that series but how did you recognize Bishop I mean he was he in the costume or out of the costume <laughs> uh I, I'm not gonna answer that Good morning, Billy. <laughs> so he was wearing the Billy Blue Jay costume walking out of uh, the Chuck last night. You know, it would have been warm. You said you, you mentioned the, the the weather, though. The great thing about last night is, and, and you've been up there. You know how that. You're not how the, in the elements. No, the, 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 we had the the. So we're in the TV booth. So you have that full wide open window. It's like three booths wide, and the the best part about that was you didn't have to worry about the wind coming in on the booth because it's at our back. And then it was when we got down on the field before the game, it was okay. Cause the sun was still out and it wasn't that bad, but man, when we left, oof, I, I'm, yeah, I'm it, glad we didn't have to deal with that. It was. So I, I went last night and uh, I hung around the, uh, out in the elements until I weaseled my way into a warmer Aww. spot. <laughs> well, because I, uh, you know, I just want to converse with people. Yeah. Um, whoever accounts the attendance, must be the same person that counts the attendance of the Supernova games. <laughs> wow. <laughs> there were 21,000. There were, hey, were 4,000 people there last night. But there was a hearty crew of Nebraska fans that got silenced uh, pretty early in that game. So, 
Creighton wins and Nebraska's 10 game winning streak comes to an end, it's a long season. You can't let it beat you twice. They got Ohio State on the weekend. I think I learned more about Creighton, but first and foremost in this matchup, which has been one sided, there's no denying that Creighton has owned Nebraska in baseball for a while now, uh, since what, uh, 2017. I mean, it's what, 11 of 14 or whatever. But to beat Creighton, and this was pretty evident last night, in a game that kind of matched the elements, it was not the prettiest game. If that was the first college baseball game you watched this year, please come back because it gets better. And those, are, and those are two good teams. But you have to be better in the dugout than Creighton. And Nebraska, under Will, has not been better in the dugout. And last night, I don't know what happened. I mean, that's a good team. Nebraska's got a good team. Creighton's got a good team. But last night, uh, in, in, in the dugout, before we ever talked about who's pitching, good night to hit, and why aren't you hitting, Nebraska wasn't good in the dugout. And that was already, uh, you know, they were already handcuffed. And that's the result. And now you're one and four against Ed. It, it, it just, it was one of those games. I, I'm glad you brought up the part about <laughs> if this was the first time watching both teams. And I, I still, I still hesitate to say that this is the prototypical defensive Ed service team that you've seen in the past. There have been they've made some mistakes along the way. I, I know the numbers support that they're still a pretty strong defensive team. That I, I think still remains to be seen on how good they will be. They were sloppy. Nebraska was really sloppy with the baseball. Nebraska made a lot of good recovery plays uh, and, and taking advantage of Creighton being a little aggressive on the base path as well. But it, there were just there were moments in this game that you're looking at the records and you're you're kind of wondering what you're watching and, and there is that element that I, I think this this game whether you want to admit it publicly or not on either side it means a lot and and I, I like the fact that Ed Service and that team they talked about it before and they talked about it after how much it meant to them I think it's always been Nebraska's role to kind of downplay it but I, I was talking to Will before the game as well and, and he was he was completely locked into what they were doing and, and this goes back to, to last night and, and what you referred to in Nebraska falling short, it's something that Will always makes mention of. And, and when I when he first got to Nebraska, if there is one thing that aggravates him more than anything, it's the non-competitive at bats. And and that was what he saw. Oh, it's so yeah. many of them. So many. Yeah, 14, 14 strikeouts. Times. Yeah, they were yeah. two of thirteen with runners in scoring position. And it was a good day to hit too. Mm-hmm. It was a good night to hit at that ballpark, yeah. which this time of the year you don't get as many. See, that's the 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 intensity part in the early beginning, um, again, this it, it's a long season. Both teams are good. I think last night I learned more about Creighton. Now, I've seen Nebraska play a lot more than I have Creighton, but, you know, I mean, from listening to you and, you know, watching a couple of games, I know they're better than they were last year, the way the roster is constructed. I mean, they Ed's done a really good job of, of building that roster where they're competitive. They're very aggressive at the plate one through nine. And then look at, they got, they started to stack some pretty good pitching performances, rather on the front end or the back end last night. Koch comes in and yeah. he was lights out. Um, so I think I learned more about Creighton. And both of these teams feel like they could be in the NCAA tournament. Now, we talked yesterday, they got to help each other. You know, both of them have good RPIs. Nebraska's RPI this morning is 13th. I think Creighton's is up to 34. So there's an opportunity for both these teams to help each other. But I was impressed by Creighton. That's a tough team. That's a that's a team that should be standing atop the Big East. And it just reiterates, if you remember, Nick, I told you in the fall, Kendall Rogers wrote an article and yeah. he was he 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 was glowing about Creighton. And there were a lot of people talking, and he he referenced people inside of the program, Ed, um, that think this can be a really good team. Well, they are. They're they're a really, really good team. And they'll meet again in a couple of weeks and hopefully Nebraska's learned their lesson. But those are one of those games where the intensity has to start in the dugout. And if it doesn't start in the dugout and you make bad decisions out of the dugout, you're going to lose. And Nebraska's lost plenty of late to Creighton. They, they can go to the NCAA tournament more times than Creighton, who's only been there one time in the last decade. But in those games, that's not a good look. But they got Ohio State this weekend. And they're back into the Big Ten and, um, you know, they're going to be fine. And, and Creighton will be fine, of course. But yeah, it was just... Sloppy game last night. Just a we- also a weird game. Yeah. Oh I mean, how God, many, yeah. How many times have you seen two guys thrown out at the plate and then the wacky uh seven one five double play? 
Yeah, the the Dylan Huff where he's following from third base and essentially gets the ball behind the runner sliding into home and tags on top of him before he gets there. It, it was at one point, John and I were kind of looking at each other as if we were in disbelief of what we were watching and what was going to happen next. And that was the thing at five to nothing, Gary. I mean, you're there, you're watching that game. You still realize, even though Creighton was in control of that moment you didn't feel like, okay, that's what the score is going to be. This is Creighton's night. You knew there was going to be some type of response by Nebraska, but then that's when, as Nebraska starts getting some runs across it in the latter part of the game, that's where some of the most bizarre things started happening as well. So I, I had no idea how this thing was going to wrap up. But, it, it, you know, I, I go back to, and I was talking to, on the way up to Evan Bland, and he asked, he said, what do you think is going to happen tonight? And I said, this is going to be the, the second time that I've seen Nebraska in person. And this will obviously have seen Creighton a lot more. I, I felt like people, at least the narrative was people thought they knew more about Nebraska going in than what they knew with Creighton. So what you just said there, Gary, I think it's very common amongst college baseball fans right now or people who pay attention to it right now is you felt you knew more about Nebraska. And I'd even say for as much as I've seen Creighton and as little as I've seen Nebraska in person, I felt I knew more about Nebraska. So I told him the one thing that I felt Creighton is now, now that you look at 25 games that they've played, I feel like they can hit with anybody. It's how good can their defense be, and especially in high leverage situations, and their overall pitching staff, especially the bullpen in the midweek, guys. And it should have been – Eli Nissen was going to be your guy – but he had to be used a little bit more on Saturday than what they had originally planned. So give Malachi Vitak a lot of credit. Him going three innings, considering they have another midweek game tonight and then their conference opening series this week, what he did just to stay in the game and keep zeros on the board in three innings of work, that was huge. And, and that answers, I think, one of the questions that we have, and that is, what are your midweek and your guys in the back end of that bullpen going to look like and what can, they can do from a strike-throwing uh, perspective? I, I was talking to Ed before the game, and we got into – it had to be about a 15-minute conversation. It was mostly on Ed's side of it, of, and it's something you and I talk about all the time the epidemic in college baseball and the inability to throw strikes. And Ed had some really good thoughts on why he thought that was the case. But I know he and we know we talked to Rob Childers yesterday, too. You talk about I think a lot of college baseball coaches that have been around for a very long time. They're very impatient with that. So if you want to have a role on either team, you got to come in and throw strikes. Yeah. And and that's it's a, it's a thing that we continue to see in college baseball. Yeah, they're Crane's a tough team. I mean, they're. They're, you know, the Big East isn't, uh, the Big East is what it is. It's a one-bid league. Yeah. But Creighton is head and shoulders above everybody else in that league. That's a really good team. And, you know, Nebraska's a good team as well. That's the thing about, sometimes you get the basketball's over, so now let's pay attention to baseball. And you get the football mentality of, man, we only have 12 games, and every game is like, oh, my God. Well, Nebraska had won 10 in a row until last yeah. night. They had a hiccup. They got to learn from it. I mean, they have to own it as well. They not only lost to Creighton, but they didn't play well last night. No, okay. They 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 messed around and they played right in the Creighton's hand when you know you got a nice crowd there that's wearing red, and you know you're feeling good. You're now ranked. You're ranked earlier in the in the week, and you're all of a sudden behind five nothing, and you're like, uh oh, here we go. And then it becomes a parade to the bullpen. So you can't let that beat you twice with a conference weekend uh, coming up, and you also have to learn a lesson that for the new guys, what this game means when you play them again at your place in a couple of weeks is that you have to win in the dugout before you ever take the field and you have to be intense for nine innings and you also have to play smart baseball i know that we just mentioned that there was some crappy little league type stuff going on last night and i even think coaching decisions whether you were being the third base box or in the dugout um it's intense and you have to you have to play smart baseball uh to beat creighton on nebraska side so i look forward to when they uh play again um, and I hope the weather is nice, good crowd. And then when they come back here at the end of the month and uh, play, um, it'll be a good crowd. Now, for people that were irate yesterday, because after we talked about it on the air about the game only being on Flow Sports, mm -hmm. um, my my texts were blowing up with people that have a workaround on Flow Sports. So I, I imagine, you know, I think what the next are the next two games on public media. I know the game in Lincoln is. Yeah, yeah, it, they both will be. Okay, so not, you know, smart idea. And I know a lot of people, a lot of Nebraska fans want to watch their team. And so you stream it and you try and make money off Nebraska fans. So it's a smart move. 
you know, maybe Creighton and Flow Sports are together and like, hey, no, 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 we don't want we don't want television for this game because uh, we want to sell some subscriptions. Um, I want to thank we have a uh, listener, uh, Tim, who I don't know what Tim does for a living. And, and Tim may be behind bars because he has done this before. But Tim sent me instructions on how to do a workaround of all of these streaming sites so you don't get charged. Okay. Now, I was at the game last night, so I didn't try it, and I'm definitely afraid. But he goes, privacy.com is your friend. Okay. Okay. This is good to know because we talked about this a little bit more off the air than on, but there are certain subscriptions a little pricey, and I don't know how much you're going to use them on a regular basis. So this this is very good to know. So uh, here here's my thing now for sporting events. The streaming charge on a month basis, monthly basis, should not be more than the price of a ticket. Agreed. Oh, that's yeah, I, that's a good yeah, good. That's good philosophy there. Yeah, I like Phil sports has made some money off Nebraska fans because there have yeah. been a handful of games that Nebraska baseball has played has been on flow sports but i was told that privacy.com is my friend and i am definitely afraid to try it because i think i'm going to knock at the door and they're also going to ding me for uh, my time in college using napster <laughs> uh 625 and we got a napster re reference all right day is complete week's complete Let's there's go. still going to be a time man I, i'm going to be walking down the street and some guy in a trench coat that is wearing clothes underneath is going to come up and go yeah were were you in uh were you in Nyhard Hall in Lincoln, Nebraska? <laughs> did you ever during that time when you would leave your dorm and go to your car, did you ever like get paranoid and think that there was a car around? You're like, gosh, I think that car's been there for a while. Well, I'm being surveilled right now. Because I think well, there was a lot of paranoia going on when they're gonna have the crackdown. Hey, when I when when there was a crackdown when I was in school and yeah. I was like, dang. So then I started using uh Bear Share and some other ones. But yeah, there was like a oh, uh, li uh, live wire right? or li li was it lime wire, lime wire, uh, lime wire, lime yeah. wire and bear share. Yeah. Uh, and but there was a crackdown on Napster. Like there there was like everybody's going, hey, did you know that the Napster investigators are on campus? You, you better <laughs> you better clear your cache. And his name was <laughs> Lars Ulrich from Metallica. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, welcome in everybody off and running on a uh, Wednesday. Uh, the whole gang is here. Matt Marinas. Uh, with thoughts on last night as uh, Creighton beat Nebraska 5-3 downtown. Uh, he will also have thoughts on uh, the season that is over now for Creighton and what is ahead. It never ends. Ask Greg McDermott. Ask Fred Hoiberg. Ask Chris Crutchfield. It never ends. They're add adding portal guys. They're losing portal guys. It is what I call portal combat. So we have oh. portal combat. <laughs> Thank you. I have uh, trademarked that. Uh, portal combat for another day, and then there is a dead period over the final four from the fourth through the eleventh. But if I remember last year, like right after the final four or that dead period ended, I think that's when Rink Mass and Bryce Williams committed to Nebraska. So you have one more day, and then it's going to go dark as everybody's at the final four, and then we'll get back after it. But we're looking forward to talking to Matt at uh, eight, and then uh, Brandon Vogel stops by at uh, nine forty, maybe with a path on how Nebraska can be the number one defense in the country, which you are trying to talk into existence. If you listen to the uh, defensive coordinator, Tony White, and 37-year-old uh, Cam Lenhart yesterday. Cam Lenhart looks like he should be like a position coach. Yes! Yes. Yeah. What? <laughs> like, like he... He could get, like, mixed up. Like, 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 when they run on the field and they're in street clothes, like, you know, before a game, does yeah. the usher go, oh, no, this is only for the players. Coach has got to walk through him. <laughs> Dang, he looks, he looks like very mature and yeah. old. Like, what, what happened? And remember, I, I thought he did last year. I didn't think, it was like, this is a freshman. This does not look like a freshman. But when he talked yesterday and he's got the, he's got the track suit on, he did it. And as you're parading in coaches and Knight and Tony White are coming in, it's like, all right, we got our defensive line coach here, uh, our assistant defensive line coach here and player Cam Lenhart. He does. He looks, I, I was going to say the exact same thing as we're kind of seeing all the guys physically and now they've transformed. I just want to say, well, Cam Lenhart's always been a big dude. He just looks like he's my age. And that's not a bad yeah. thing. I mean, he, he just, he has a very mature presence and look to him. Yes. Thank you. I'm glad you said that. I was like, uh, I didn't, 
I was looking through my roster. I was like, I didn't know Nebraska added another position coach. Yeah. Oh, coach oh wait a minute. Wait a minute. That kid's uh, what? 19. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Right. The uh, lineup brought to you by the referees at uh, John Higgins uh, weather guard. Also late last night, not that it, maybe it affects us. Uh, the people in Jackson County said, hell no to the Royals and the chiefs. And so a new Royal stadium in the crossroads in downtown Kansas city or upgrades to Arrowhead, not happening for now. They could do a vote in another year. Um, but I'm sure there'll be some fallout and there will be panic that the chiefs and the Royals will be moving out of Kansas city. You know how far the chiefs are going to move Kansas. The chiefs and Royals are not moving out of Kansas city. They are not moving out of Kansas city, but it does give them a reset to have a better rollout of what they wanted to accomplish with this vote. Um, but they took an L. Very rarely do the Chiefs get blown out at home. Last night they got blown out at home. Shocking. Very shocking. I, I Okay, I don't know the, the, the inner workings and the politics that go with the great state of Missouri and the Kansas City area. I was surprised I mean, that didn't pass. Were you surprised? Not great. No, I was not. Okay. I, 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 I knew it would be close. I didn't think it would be as one-sided. Here, here's the problem. This is a Trev Alberts thing. You just assume because you're the brand that people are going to like fall over and they're going to give you everything you want. And you don't have to be buttoned up. You think, hey, I got this $450 million stadium project. It's GBR. It's Memorial Stadium. Everybody's going to be on board. Mm-hmm. And your rollout is clunky. The Chiefs and the Royals rollout was really clunky and good on the voters that said, hold on, I got a lot of questions here. It's not necessarily about the 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 uh, three-eighths tax. It is, what is the plan here? Because the Royals kind of changed their plan on some things they were going to do. So you were going to vote for something that after you voted it in was going to change. Good on voters going, hold on here for a moment. Um, again, I call their bluff. The Royals and the Chiefs are not leaving Kansas City, but good on the voters that said, hold on a minute. I need more information. And I, I do think eventually the Royals will get a new stadium. The Chiefs will do what they need to do. Um, but if you're if you own land out by the Kansas Speedway, which many of us have been to because you have the Sporting KC Stadium, you have the gigantic Nebraska Furniture Mart. You've got where the um, the American Association team plays, the Kansas City Monarchs. Uh, you got all kinds of things that are building out there. You know, if a lot of people that either have gone to the Speedway or gone to a Sporting KC game, you drive down there, or you're going, you know, hopping on the Turnpike to go to Lawrence. I mean, there's a ton of land out there. Yeah, that that might be an area that is back in play. So good, good on the people in Jackson County because they said, hold on a moment. And then it'll allow the Royals and the Chiefs to kind of reset on their plan and it won't be so quick and they can build up before they put it to a vote again. But I do think it'll pass eventually, but not this way. You just can't assume that because you're a brand that people are going to go, oh, wow, that's what I, oh, you want my money? Here you go. Yeah, no, that's a good point. It's it's a fair point because in that's I think now more than ever, people are, are a lot more mindful of exactly where their money's going. There, there, there's so many things that we see that here. You know, we see that in Douglas County. We see that in Sarpy County. We see that in, in heck, even in, in Lincoln and Lancaster. You have so many things that you are distributing your money and your hard earned money to. And when people just say ah, it's, it's almost kind of don't worry, this is going to be great for you. Don't worry. You're going to love this. So just we just need a little bit of your help here. And, and we're going to make this happen. It's going to be excellent for everyone. I, I think the question there is is probably, all right, I'm not necessarily against the idea and eventually having tax dollars go towards this. But yeah, how are we rolling this thing out? How is it going to look? Now, I, I think that's fair. And I, I think the idea behind it, I always believed everybody would be all for it, or at least the majority of people that are fans of both the Chiefs and the Royals would be for it. And to see that improvement, and especially the downtown ballpark I talked about, the very few times that I go a year, I still go, I think it'd be great to be downtown. But you're right. I think the rollout of it, that's probably important. It's something that I know I miss because I assumed that this was just going to be a formality. And today we'd be talking about how it passed and uh, they're going to, uh, you know, away they go, especially with the baseball. Uh, hey, that's, there. 
the 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 same thing with the stadium project in Lincoln. Now there you know there's no tax dollars involved, even though there was maybe a little push for some state funding. Uh, the rollout wasn't very good. I mean, it wasn't wasn't smooth, where it wasn't convincing. You didn't have questions that are answered because, you know, people go, well, why are we doing this? Well, when when a board of regents or a voter says why, you should be able to have an answer and then a solution, a solution and a benefit. And I don't think in Nebraska's case uh, or in Trev Albert's case, and then in the Royals or the Chiefs, they had they had as many answers to the why, which is always a great thing that we should always ask. Why? Yep. Why? And the people in Jackson County said, uh, not today. And it, it was, I mean, they beat him by, a, it was a three to two margin. I knew that a lot of the reports on Monday where they think it's going to be really, really close, like, like in the range of 50-50. Mm-hmm. And it ended up being a, a resounding uh, no. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of panic again about the Chiefs and the Royals are going to leave Kansas City. And then everybody will be able to say, hey, why don't the Royals move to Omaha? Oh. And the storm chasers south and bring the Royals to downtown Omaha. Would you kick out the College World Series forever if you could have the Royals? Um, yeah. 81 home games, this is Major League question. Baseball, kick out the College World Series, send it to Kalamazoo, and Omaha gets a Major League Baseball team. I would. I want a Major League Baseball franchise here, so I would. I know that sounds really, really, really un Omaha like of me. Like how how the hell could you even think that? Eh, Major League Baseball team, a two week event. Yeah, I, I I'd be on board with that. I now would it go to would it go to Kalamazoo though? Would it go to Overland Park? Yeah, that's or right. They got the College yeah. Baseball Hall of Fame down there. Yeah, you know, you might as well just build a stadium. I mean, they could have they could have. They have the College World Series Stadium right outside of the College Baseball Hall of Fame. It would yeah. make perfect sense. See, there it is. And while we have the Royals playing here, well, yeah. they'd have to they'd have do a lot of things to uh, <laughs> the old Chuck. <laughs> you think? Uh, yeah, they would. <laughs> they would. And it would actually be beneficial. Yeah. Uh, uh, 34 uh, past the hour, off and rolling on a uh, Wednesday. Uh, a lot more from uh, last night where uh, Creighton beat Nebraska in baseball, 5-3. Uh, Creighton's back at it tonight against North Dakota State. Uh, Nebraska's off to the weekend against uh, Ohio State. And also yesterday, the Omaha softball won their 15th in a row. They beat uh, Creighton over at uh, Connie Claussen. Plus, we are inching closer to the Final Four and a record number of people, you, me, and Dupree, all watched Iowa LSU on uh, Monday. All of that to come as we roll till 10. There's uh, Nick. I'm Gary. Jimmy here as well. It's Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com with Gary Sharp and Nick Hanley. The best way to catch all the action is on 1620 The Zone and no line for the bathroom. Watching a ball game at Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill is pretty awesome. Oscar's offers the MLB package, so your team is always on their upgraded audio video system, and nothing is better than watching the game with a cold, frosty one, Oscar's Pizza, or award-winning char-buffed wings. And with daily lunch and dinner specials, it's really a no-brainer. So get ready to watch your favorite team play ball at Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill, 173rd and West Center Road, and takeout at 162nd in Maple. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is available right at your fingertips in Iowa. The Circus Sports Iowa app is sports betting the way it should be. Bet anywhere in Iowa and experience high betting limits, tight money line splits, and exceptional customer service. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircusSports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. A gain sent bead story. Jim was at the laundromat when he heard his ear said Maraca, senor, but his nose said, Hey, freshest scent ever. Following his nose, Jim found a man pouring a bottle of gain sent beads into the washer. The scent, the freshness. Jim blurted, Sir, your scent Maraca smell amazing. Actually, Jim, most noses call them gain sent beads. 
Try Gain Scent Beads, way fresher than detergent alone. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency on earth, and if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes, and further rate hikes are expected. Most people don't know it, but the IRS adds interest charges to your tax debts daily. So if you owe the IRS today, you'll owe even more tomorrow. And it doesn't stop until you get right with the IRS. The good news is getting right can start with one phone call to Optima Tax Relief, America's number one tax relief firm. Optima's tax professionals specialize in the Fresh Start Initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800-348-0269. 800 348 800-348-0269. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Email any of our shows anytime into the Equitable Bank inbox. At Equitable, we take banking personally. For me, John at 1620thezone.com. The Equitable Bank inbox from 1620thezone. When it comes to protecting your home, J. Stennett Contracting takes pride in ensuring every detail is handled. Roofing, siding, gutters. When it comes to the exterior of your home, J. Stennett Contracting has you covered. Have you noticed stains on your ceiling this winter? With storm season around the corner and the damage it can bring, let J. Stennett Contracting ensure that your roof is durable and holds up against the weather this spring and summer. When you need an honest assessment, J. Stennett Contracting has you covered. JSCRestoration.com Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply and we're back mornings with sharp and handy here's Gary Nick and Jimmy on 1620 the zone Hey, it's something I can get behind is welcome back into mornings with uh, sharp and handy on 1620 the zone Jimmy here as well we're on uh, TV the app all that kind of good stuff uh this is a Jimmy special I I appreciate the 6 p.m. first pitches. Yeah. Or the 6 p.m. tip-offs. Now, the tip-offs are a little bit different. I, I don't think we'll ever get like a across-the-board 6 o'clock tip-off. We love our 7.05 or whatever TV says we can do. But baseball, give me the 6 o'clock first pitch. Enjoying Reds and Phillies last night. It was not an enjoyable night in Philly, but it was warm in my place so yeah six o'clock baseball no, you, you guys know why that that's the best one is last night that game that nebraska crate game felt like it was a four-hour game and it was just a hair under three hours you felt like you were leaving the ballpark at like 11 yeah, actually the game was over pretty much at nine o'clock they, if that game's at seven o'clock uh-uh hell no see you're coming along to my side now you guys since you were old what are you we combine 105 years old and I got seven. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm 45. You guys have realized that you can do you if you work it right, if you work your body right, you can do about four and a half hours of sleep a night. I'm listening. I get I'm about four and a half hours of sleep a night. You get how much? About four and a half hours of sleep. Um, I'm I'm now five. About a, about a Thirty minute power nap when I go home, like right away before I work out or do anything, and then about four and a half hours. I and mean, there's too many games to watch. I'd rather stay up and watch games than get up early and watch like a condensed version. Mm. So I stay up and watch. I mean, I'm watching a lot of the NBA, the late night games. Plus your beam team is always late. So hey, yeah. man, big win last night against the Clips. Yeah. But the 6 p.m. first pitch start, uh, you know, the Storm Chasers, depending on what time of the year it is, they'll have different start times. Like early in the year when school's in session, they'll go at 6. And then when everybody's out of school, they'll go back to the, you know, like the 7.05 uh, yeah. first pitch. 
But any game starting in the six o'clock hour, I am a big fan of. Because Nebraska's starting, Nebraska's like got the six thirty-five start down pat. Yep. Yeah, that's and, and, and even Omaha. Omaha's starting some of their games at five. Oh. Well, they're they're trying to appease their East Coast friends. You know, a lot of Summit League teams out there on the East Coast time zone. So no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, the, the six o'clock start time. For baseball and games that, if we're talking about just like last night's game as an example, that a game that is sloppy like that, you feel like it's taking a lot uh, out of you watching it and the amount of mistakes that are being made. It it naturally does have that long feel to it. But then you realize, hey, that game did start at six o'clock. No, you know, a lot of people are leaving the ballpark like, hey, it's nine o'clock. I think it's a college baseball thing. If you well, don't, have, if, yeah. outside of your Friday night where each team probably has a hoss. College baseball just drags. I know there's the pitch clock, which is not really enforced. College baseball drags. It does. Because guys can't throw strikes. Yep. I mean, it, it, how, when was – here would be a good research item. Last time Nebraska and Creighton played a baseball game that was under two hours or 2.15. Probably not. Well, maybe, I should, maybe it should change. That they made it to the seventh inning by two hours and 15 minutes. That's probably a better question. It's probably happened a few more times than I can remember. Um, probably within the last decade that that's actually been the case because you've seen it so many times, Gary, that that game, it'll hit a moment, whether it's the fifth or the sixth, where all of a sudden it just comes to a standstill, where you might even yes, get three or happened. four innings where it's that cruising. Last night. Yeah, yeah, that happened last night. Yeah. And then yeah. it's like, what the hell am I watching? All right. John writes into the uh, Equitable Bank inbox where they take banking personally. Uh, about the uh, Royals to Omaha. Never going to happen with the population in Omaha. Hater, John. Uh, just like the rumor of the NHL. But the funny part is, based on what the Kansas City Royals average in attendance, Omaha could probably beat that. Mm -hmm. Love the show. It sounded like dozens were at the park. and Young Jake's great call at the beginning of the show. Now, that game was at Camden Yards, and there was weather. Oh, okay. Yeah. For some reason, I thought they were at home last night. No, okay. they were in Baltimore where they've had some weather issues. And Philly had the same weather, so yes. it makes sense. Yes. Um. So here, like, the whole thing about Vegas, and, and, and Tropicana closed yesterday. Did you guys see any of the video of, like, the last people to leave the casino? Are they old? Um, yeah, no. so we were talking about this during the crossover, so I, I did saw some images of it. No, I, the, the TikToks I saw were, like, you know, because, you know, your 75-year-old grandfather is on TikTok or your dad. Yeah. Um, there were like younger people that wanted to film, like being told that they had to leave for the final time or catching the the overhead announcement that Tropicana is now closed, not for the day, but forever. And it was kind of sad. But in Vegas, so they're, you know, they closed Tropicana. So that's where the A's stadium is going to be. I don't think, and I, that's not a guarantee that they're going to move to Las Vegas, not a guarantee that they're going to stay in Oakland, but. It's why, why hockey works in Vegas is it's a little bit of a niche sport. It's yeah. new to the area, even though they have a, a, a kind of a small history of minor league hockey. But another part of the sport and the team is that was an expansion team. Mm -hmm. It was all theirs. It didn't belong to anybody else. You weren't stealing it from anybody. It was Vegas's own. You could come up with the nickname and it was yours from the start. There's a little bit of hesitation of, oh, we're getting somebody's leftovers. Were they A's? Uh, I always think of Oakland. Now, football is different. And the Raiders have hopscotch all over the, you know, California now to Nevada. But the getting a somebody else's team compared to expansion team, like in Omaha, we were talking about an NHL team. It, it would have been appealing because it would have been an expansion team. You know, it would have been one of Omaha's own instead of we get the Atlanta Thrashers here. And so we have to pick up for all of their, you know, all of yeah. their leftovers. Um, but I, you know, I, it's the Royals aren't going anywhere. They might, they, they're going to go to a new stadium. They're going to get a downtown ballpark. That's, that's what I think will happen. It may not be in the crossroads. It may be in what I think is a better location in the East village, but we can all dream, but, but there is one thing about this and I'm kind of tongue in cheek on this is if somebody needed to be bailed out, Omaha is an option. Omaha is an option because they have a stadium that, you know, already a major league game has been played here. It's got some major league technology, major league lighting, which is, you know, one of the first things that have to have to be uh, approved. Uh, so if somebody has, you know, 
they have to relocate for a little bit. Omaha would be a real option. We could figure it out. Yeah, I, I, I think it always would be. I, I, I think that it, from a baseball sense of it, there's, it, yeah, you start with the infrastructure. And, and then I think of that ballpark alone, if you needed to expand it, I mean, you've got the ability to do that in the outfield as well. You know, so if if the the twenty four thousand would, would, would that mean putting up a scoreboard in left field? Oh, Gary, you'd get your wish. I'm right. hey, I am I am on team, I'm team Gary on that one too. Ribbon board, yeah, oh, it's, one of those. It's one of the most ridiculous things at that ballpark that yeah. they have the structure to put a, a a scoreboard that looks exactly the same they have in right field in left field, but it just is empty. Yeah, so you don't go. Oh, I'm glad they left it empty so I can see the Bob. Carry pedestrian bridge. You go. Oh, did they run out of money? Yeah. That they couldn't yeah, put a scoreboard in left field. Yeah. It it looks unfinished, and it's the it, it, you've called games there, so you know how it is. Trying to see the entire scoreboard from your broadcast vantage point, especially in the radio booths, it's damn near impossible. You're always sticking your head out. Uh, oh wait, what does that say down there? Yeah, it's. I it it was. I don't think it was built with the convenience of. Uh, us radio folk in mind, but yeah, I mean that that entire outfield, you you could build up upon that as well, and I, I do think it would be something that would be highly supported. It, it's it's an interesting thing about Vegas that you brought up. I think if you're right, I never thought of it that way of the expansion versus getting a, a team that's moving over like the Raiders, and then eventually if the A's do come to Vegas, that there is something appealing of it being your own thing. And then I think even a step further with Vegas, having it be their very first pro sports team. And I know they've had major minor league ba basketball or baseball there too, but as far as your first major NFL, MLB, NHL team that you have that there, you're going to embrace that. I, I do wonder if baseball was the first one there, if people would be more accepting of that. If, if Vegas wouldn't resist that as much, or if it was always going to be kind of a butting of the heads when it comes to that organization coming over there. Now, if it was an expansion baseball team, I think they would be all about it. I think it's a great point, though, about we can name it. This is ours. We help create this. And so, hell yeah, we're going to support this as opposed to, well, now we're going to get another fan base in. We're going to get these Raiders fans coming over from, you know, the transplants all over the place. I think that that's a big part of it. I, I just think Omaha, whether it's expansion or it'd be a team relocating, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm misreading this, but in my time here, I've always felt We've had this conversation so many times. We're clamoring for it so much that whether it's a hockey franchise or it's a baseball franchise to come over and we would support the crap out of it. But you've brought this up before, and I totally agree when it comes to baseball. Okay, we understand you're excited about this. That first, those, that first month is going to be great. Hell, that first year is going to be great. But you need to support this for over 80 games a year. Yeah, it's Are 80, you willing to do that? 80, it's 81 games compared to 41. Right. Right. Um. Uh, Doug writes into his own inbox, um, and the first uh, in the first four words he uses the phrase "moron." Uh, who is the mor Who is the moron we can blame for having the Nebraska Creighton basketball game on the same day as the Nebraska Wisconsin football game? Now, Doug has been preoccupied, so he's just catching up here. My question is: Was this the only day that could have it because of TV, or is it gamemanship from either Nebraska or Creighton's athletic department? I asked this question. Because there has been uh, some past game and chip from Nebraska going back to when Barry Collier made the statement, I'm not sure why we need to play Creighton every year. Back when Danny Nee had the advantage, they played like twice a year, which is too much. Yes. That is still, that's still wild that Nebraska and Creighton would play twice in a year. What network will even carry this game? Additionally, as a sponsor of Big Red Overreaction, now we're getting selfish, Doug. I'm pissed. As this can't help the ratings if the games are back to back. I haven't listened intently the last few days, so I apologize if you've already covered this. And then I have to add this. I was going to leave this out, but I'll add this. Our Nebraska fans getting tired of getting beat by Creighton in basketball and baseball. Volleyball, of course, is a different story. Um, to answer your question, Doug, it is the home team that provides the date. Who's so playing at home? Who has a home game next year? Uh, that would be the Blue Jays. Yeah. So enjoy yeah. this game on FS2. Yep. Which would be very disrespectful to both programs to have this game on FS2. No, it's going to be on Flow Sports. 
<laughs> if that's the case, hey, hit me up, boys and girls. I got all the instructions on privacy.com yeah. to privacy. get free flow sports. <laughs> What would that? How great would that be? Well, it wouldn't be great, obviously, but you know what? We're just we're going to try this once. Flow Sports is going to carry the Nebraska Craig. First time ever. This is our marquee matchup. We're putting all of our support behind it. It's going to be fantastic. Of a couple of uh, Creighton students will be doing the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Over well. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh huh. I I got to imagine that this game possibly gets moved, like the date, maybe the day after. Because FS2 would be the only option for this game to be on TV. Now, this is a long way away. This is not until November. Um, but one, one, I will say, I'm glad that this is on the books so that there's no fretting of, hey, Nebraska and Creighton, you know, right. are they going to, you got it on the books for the next two years. Uh, and this game just coincides with a Nebraska home game. Now, road game, different. Home game, hmm. I, I, I I think my gut says there will be a movement of this game. Not not to like a week or two, but maybe a day. Do you think they looked at the wrong calendar year when they uh, finalized that contract? No, I, like, I, oh, I, I, oh, I'm, I'm bad. You know, I mean, I mean, Creighton is one of the main tenants of the Chai, so they submit dates. Um, you know, your 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 marquee games get on the books earlier before your buy games. Um, yeah. or, you know, or your events where you're going to Atlantis, like Creighton is, um, I don't know, maybe I haven't looked like at the Chai's schedule. Maybe they have a lot of concerts. Maybe they don't have a lot of inventory in November for Creighton to play home games. And this was one of the days and Creighton jumped on it, but it's the home team. It's the home team that has the date. And then there is an agreement, but I mean, probably it, you know, probably in the Nebraska basketball office, when they sign this agreement, um, they're not looking at the Nebraska football schedule. Because if my math is they're right. Looking at, they're, they're looking at their own schedule, and maybe it's a Nebraska thing where Nebraska's schedule, the only way you can fit this game is in is on this date. Yeah, to me, that's the only thing that I think your hand is forced there because as much as I know people can speculate that this was a strategic move by Creighton, Look, they they get. We talk about the Jasker fan. They get the fans that are going to be on a uh, on a Husker game day Saturday are going to be in attendance there. It, that does impact the attendance. That impacts the audience. And so I, I don't think that this was deliberately done for any type of gamesmanship. Is is Doug Wright's in there? But I get the optics of that. I so it, now if I'm if I'm doing the math correctly, not that this is a big. Uh, part of it, but in trying to avoid other things going on in the area, you would have state football that following Monday and Tuesday, if I'm looking at the calendar correctly, because then the following week is Thanksgiving. So the Saturday that this game is scheduled for the following weekend would be, you know, Black Friday and, and you would have those games. So typically you have state playoffs that Monday and Tuesday. I'm curious about even the Friday before unless there's a concert there uh, having even a Friday evening game, kind of a primer for then a Nebraska football game. The next day you get Creighton, yeah. Nebraska the Friday before, I think it would be pretty awesome. You get a seven o'clock primetime game. That would be a lot of fun. Again, I don't know if CHI health center has something scheduled. That could be a concert night. I'm not sure, but I even think that would be so much better than having that on a Saturday when Nebraska's playing at home. Um, you know, and they go to the battle of Atlantis right after right. that scheduled date. There's also, I mean, because we 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 talk about this a lot with Nebraska's schedule when the Big Ten schedule comes out and they don't have a lot of weekend dates or Saturday dates. Saturday is golden for Creighton and Nebraska playing at home. And I, you know, again, I don't know what the master schedule is downtown, but does that lead to, hey, uh, if you guys want to play on a weekend in the month of November, this is the only date that we have available. And then in December. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. I, we'll, uh, we got, we got a long time before this uh, this game tips off, but the uh, television network and the tip time will be very curious because you won't know the Nebraska Wisconsin kickoff time. I think it'll be in that window of that six to twelve day window. Okay, so here's here's a question then: How upset would diehard Creighton fans be if they do end up moving this? 
if they move it because you would know the reason behind it. They would be moving that to accommodate people being able to see and go to Lincoln. And I, the, the optics of that would be what well, you're you're trying to accommodate and cater to the Nebraska fan. That's not right. We shouldn't be doing that, even though they know we know everyone knows that a That's lot of those people that be in Lincoln would, would also be at, at, the, at the CHI Health Center. Jimmy, you did the North, North Dakota State uh, Creighton game on a. Uh... It was a Husker Road game. I did. It Wasn't was, it? A, no, it was the Maryland game. It was the Maryland game. They, there were still, what, 15,000 people there? Yeah. Yeah. But you could tell they were had their eyes on their phone. <laughs> then again, in their defense, uh, second half got out of hand. But yeah. Who says this is a football state? We're worried about basketball. Who cares? Can they move the Nebraska-Wisconsin game? Oh, Friday game? There it is. There's our Friday game. Oh, Night uh, game in Lincoln, 11 a.m. in Omaha. Yep, we're gonna go. We're gonna go Friday. Oh, you talk about pissing off Creighton fans. Now let's just go ahead and piss off an entire state and play the Nebraska football game against Wisconsin on a Friday night in Lincoln. Yeah, that's not gonna go well. Um, I can. What you just mentioned? Hey, what you just mentioned? Basketball at 11 a.m. Football kickoff night. at night. There you or go. If, we solved this. If Big mm-hmm. Fox wants Nebraska Wisconsin for their big nude, then you switch it around. You play football at 11, and then you play basketball that night. Perfect. Eight o'clock game. Everyone's lubed up downtown one way or the other. Perfect. I will charter a bus so that we can go to both. There you go. Sixteen twenty to bus. We'll have a changing room in the back for everybody to change out of their uh, red into their blue. Or do other things. Be perfect. Hey, Flow Sports is making money off Nebraska fans. I'll make (laughs) fans. We'll see if we can cross train to sponsor that too. All right. Update uh, coming up with uh, Jimmy uh, a little bit later. Matt D. Marinas. Uh, His thoughts on the uh, 21 and four start for uh, Creighton baseball. That includes their win over Nebraska last night. Also, uh, we'll talk some hoops. Uh, decisions to be made. Uh, portal combat going on all throughout <laughs> college basketball. Just chew on this. One in three that. players in Division One basketball are or have been in the portal. One in three in men's college basketball. It's not a Nebraska problem. It's not an Omaha problem. It's not a Creighton problem. It's what college basketball is on the men's side. Uh, right now. That to come in the next uh, hour. Also, Brandon Vogel stops by. It's Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. 1620 The Zone. Traffic. From the Pyramid Roofing, time-saving traffic center. An earlier accident still has the I-480 southbound off-ramp to I-80 westbound closed. This will be closed indefinitely. This has traffic backed up to Martha Street. A couple alternatives. If this is part of your morning commute, you could use JFK southbound to L Street to get back on JFK northbound to access I-80 westbound. This will likely pile up as the morning goes on, or you could access the 42nd on-ramp to I-80 westbound if you wish to do so. Remember to stay safe and wear that seatbelt. I'm Peter Krenzer. This time-saving traffic was brought to you by Fernando's. Mario Street Tacos or Steak and Chorizo Queso Blanco Enchiladas can only be found in one place. Fernando's. Great Mexican food, awesome margaritas, and a wonderful family atmosphere. Fernando's. Omaha's favorite Mexican for more than 30 years. Hey, Tapper, for the FanDuel Sportsbook and the college basketball calendar is winding down, but the sports calendar is loaded and FanDuel is making it Even more exciting to get in on the action. Why? Because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's right, $200 you could use to bet the rest of the tournament, Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL, and so much more. Even look at their page right now. You could check out the Parlay Hub. You could check out International Soccer. There's so many options for you with our friends from the FanDuel Sportsbook. Head over there, use fanduel.com slash happer right now and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. 21 and over, present in Iowa. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is now withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. 
Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. Welcome to this episode of RV Ready, brought to you by Leach Camper Sales in Council Bluffs. Rody? Leach Camper Sales has the RV for you, and I am calling you out here. People should go to leachcamper.com and check out the inventory. And don't forget, the coffee's always on. We're going abroad for the first time in years to Spain. But we don't speak Spanish. So we started using Babbel. And started learning Spanish fast. With Babbel, you can start having conversations in another language in just three weeks. Babbel's conversational method teaches you real-life words and phrases. And with Babbel's interactive bite-sized lessons, you'll remember what you learned. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿De dónde eres? ¿De dónde eres? When you learn a language, you want to actually use it. Babbel is designed with that goal in mind. In just three weeks, we're starting to have conversations in Spanish. Estoy muy emocionado para ir a España contigo. Aw, he just said, I'm very excited to go to Spain with you. Nos vamos a divertir mucho. And that means we're going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> sí. Gracias, Babel. Babel, language for life. Celebrating 10 million subscriptions sold. Now try Babel for free at Babel.com. Just go to Babel.com and start learning a new language today. That's Babel.com. B-A-B-B-E-L.com. It's spring. Now is the best time to shop at Lenaha for all things garden or landscape. Our garden center is filled with the largest selection of homegrown plants, flowers, trees, and more. The area's best mulch and soil available for delivery and pickup. Rooted in quality, unmatched value. Lenaha Nurseries, 192nd and Center. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZ and Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. News Talk 1290 Coil is your radio home for Omaha Storm Chasers baseball. Proud AAA affiliate of the Kansas City Royals. Tune in to hear every pitch, every hit, and every out as the Chasers play at Warner Park and across the International League in 2024. With the voice of the Omaha Storm Chasers, Nick Batters, on News Talk 1290 Coil. The Storm Chasers travel to Columbus to take on the Clippers. First pitch is scheduled at 515. Listen to the game on your home for Storm Chasers baseball. 1290 Coil. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Hammond. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. Hey, on March 27th, we selected 16 listeners to be paired with 16 teams. Check out the censored 1620 bracket leading up to the championship game at 1620thezone.com. Yes, do as he says immediately. Give us your email, too, while you're at it. Be part of 1620 the club. Hey, Creighton yeah. Baseball is off to its best start since 1986 after a 5-3 win over Nebraska. Last night at the Chuck, it's the Jays' ninth victory in its last 11, 11 meetings with the Big Red and snapped a 10-game Nebraska winning streak this season that was its longest since 2015. Creighton's now 21-4 and on the year. Its best 25-game start since 1986. Nebraska drops to 20-6. and The Jays host North Dakota State tonight at the Chuck at 6. It'll be chilly. The Huskers host Ohio State for three at Haymarket Park beginning on Friday. It'll be warmer this weekend. Uh, Creighton women's basketball's Emma Ronsick will have one year, her COVID year, eligibility remaining as she hits the transfer portal. Her time as a Blue Jay comes to a close after 115 games, in, uh, which includes the program's first Elite Eight in 2022 and a top 10 spot on Creighton's all-time scoring list. Kase Tomonaga is selected to play in a Reese's NABC All-Star Game, which takes place Friday at 530 at the State Farm Stadium in Glendale as part of Final Four Friday. So we get to play on the court with everything looking giant. The game will be televised on the CBS Sports Network if you uh, would like to sit back and enjoy some of that. The game is a showcase for college seniors. And Tomonaga is the eighth Husker player or coach to participate in the All-Star Game, the second Husker in as many years to earn the honor as Derek Walker played in it last year. He'll also compete in the Haynes Men's Three-Point Championship on Thursday evening for a chance to win prizes, including a giant pack of uh, T-shirts and underwear as part of the State Farm College Slam Dunk and three-point championships. Omaha Softball wins their 15th straight with a 5-2 win over Creighton last night at Connie Clausen. Cam Meyer throws a four-hitter with 10 strikeouts, picks up her 15th win of the season. The Storm Chasers are postponed at Columbus, as you heard 
Nick and Ed say they'll try again today at 515. The head of the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament is pushing to review potential changes to the event's format this summer, a year sooner than previously planned. The Women's Basketball Committee was scheduled to revisit the, its decision to hold the first two rounds of the tournament at campus sites for highly ranked teams and to hold its second weekend games in two sites rather than four after 2025. A change in format for the first rounds could potentially help avoid logistical problems such as the ones that occurred at the games hosted by Gonzaga in the first two rounds of this year's tournament. A lack of available hotel space hosts most of all teams competing in Spokane to stay more than 30 miles from the Gonzaga campus in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, while in Idaho, members of the Utah basketball team were harassed by men flying Confederate flags in their truck and yelling racist slurs. In Portland, teams played several games with one three-point line that was nine inches shorter than the other, and a referee was replaced midway through a game between Chattanooga and NC State when the NCAA discovered that the official had failed to disclose she had a master's degree from Chattanooga. And last week, Notre Dame All-American Hannah Hidalgo missed several minutes of her team's loss to Oregon State when referees forced her from the game until team trainers removed a no ring that she had worn throughout the season and the first two rounds of the tournament. They just do not like any fun. Representatives of the athletics ownership met with officials from Oakland and Alameda County yesterday to discuss the city's most recent offer to keep the Las Vegas bound team at the Coliseum at least through 2027. The negotiations which took place in the team office did not produce a resolution, no shock there, and the A's are expected to meet with Sacramento officials Wednesday to hear their proposal to be the team's home for a minimum of three seasons beginning next year. Ah, beam team baseball. Finally, in the NBA, Nikola Jokic scored 42 points and outdueled Victor Wembayama in Denver's 110-105 win over the San Antonio Spurs, exacting revenge for the Nuggets' sweep at the hands of the Spurs in the first round in 1990. Last night, they retake sole possession of first place in the West through the Nuggets. Jokic also grabbed 16 rebounds and had six assists. Wemby at 23 points, 15 rebounds, eight assists, and nine blocks. That's right, he almost had a quadruple double. Three of Jokic's baskets came on rare dunks. That's a bigger story there, something he said. He uh, had to do facing Wemby. Michael, don't call me Terry Porter, who had 15 points and a career best 16 rebounds, made a three with 28 seconds left to put Denver up 108-105. Wemby missed a three with 18 seconds left, but the Spurs burned 10 seconds before Wemby fouled Jokic, who sank both free throws with eight seconds remaining. The Nuggets now 53-23, and 23, take a half-game lead over your other team, the Thunder, who lost 109-105 at Philly earlier in the night. And, and Minnesota back. Yes. And Minnesota kept pace with Oklahoma City when they beat Houston. So uh, Nuggets 53 and 23, Timberwolves 52 and 23. If you do the math, we're about six, seven games left in the regular season. Mm-hmm. Uh, good night of uh, ball, y'all, last night in the uh, association. Playoffs are coming. Uh, thanks, Jimmy. Um, I should mention uh, Jimmy in his update, and, and I, I, I referenced this quickly in the first hour Omaha softball has won 15 in a row. I think that's the second longest winning streak currently in Division I softball. So they beat Creighton yesterday, 5-2. Cam uh, Meyer's so good. Two of our uh, longtime uh, listeners were working the bases yesterday. Who's that? Iowa oh. JD was working first base, nice. and Greg and Hastings was working third. Oh, so you know that that game was a smooth operation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I chuckle about that. Yeah. See, I know, I, know Greg, um, I know Greg more than Iowa JD, and I've gotten to know Iowa JD via social media this last um, – a uh, year and some change. Uh, but yeah, Greg, Greg and Hastings. Yeah. Greg knows. Yeah. Two, two guys that I, I, I would, I would trust that they've, they, what, what's the combined experience that they have uh, officiating and humping probably uh, like 40 years, 50 years. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, JD's not that old, but Greg is. <laughs> wow. Oh, I don't know. Just Greg, like, just mean. like on flow sports last night, Matt rules catching strays from those two broadcasters. Greg and Hastings just caught a stray. <laughs> what? We were just talking about different players. That's all. I was. Uh, I got an email right away. It was like, "Hey, ask Nick about why they are throwing uh, throwing smoke at uh, Matt Rule during the Creighton Nebraska baseball broadcast." We didn't throw smoke. We said a player. I think we were talking about Will Walsh, if I remember correctly, his size that uh, he might want to be looked at. On the football team as well. Look, they're they're oh, known. It's, it's the DJ Burns. Let's let him play his sport that he plays. Yeah. Just because uh, he's big and he looks like he should. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how long they've uh, combined experience, but they're both very good umpires. Um, I worked one game last summer and never got invited back. And I had a clean game. People in Papillion you even bought pants for the game. Yeah, I did. People in Pap- and I got a clicker. People in Papillion. Oh, people in Papillion love me. 
Hey, what's the clicker technology like these days? Is it still just like the little the little windy thing, or is it like yes. bigger and you can oh, like no. look at it? No, it's the windy. Okay, I thought maybe it was like a touch screen thing now. Uh, Jimmy, I think if we were having a pool yesterday, we said how long would it take for uh, Nebraska volleyball's uh, spring exhibition yeah, match, match out minutes. in Kearney? Uh, 46 minutes. Yeah, I said an hour. But you can't go over unless we all go over. I know. So it's a sellout, not a surprise. It only took 46 minutes. Can volleyball get bigger in the state? Well, first, let me just say, with on the heels of Iowa LSU drawing 12.3 mil, and at peak, there were 16 million people were watching that game on ESPN on Monday night. I mean, the Caitlin Clark effect, stars, rivalry, whatever, the quality of play, that is that is a jaw-dropping number. I mean, it's she she is she there is there is no doubt if you ever had about her effect and you can't turn her off but 12.3 million is just unbelievable but there's also the part of what she is doing and on the on, on the discussion about volleyball and especially in the state where from east to west north to south we have great volleyball and we love the sport is it right now is pretty good for a young girl to be interested in sports there's an investment in sports. There is more attention towards female sports. And it is a great time to go out and buy a 22 jersey, fall in love with your favorite volleyball player, whatever. It is a great time for young girls to be invested in sports because it finally is loving them back. You know, there's investment and there's care on the, you know, all aside of what Jimmy said about how the NCAA has treated the division one women's tournament. But as I, as you know, I look at Nebraska volleyball and what they did last year, and then you sell out a spring match in 46 minutes, which has kind of become the norm when they go outside of Lincoln to play is can the, can the sport of volleyball get any bigger in this state? Um, Yeah, it could, because if you want to go ahead and if there was ever a stadium expansion, not a, uh, a stadium renovation, but if all of a sudden you had 105 or 115,000 capacity and they decided to try to do volleyball day in Nebraska again, it's not something I think you can do every year. You don't want to dilute the product, but if you did that, say 10 years down the road and you had a bigger stadium, I have no doubts that that would sell out again. I have I would, no doubts that I would, would beat that. No, I, I would never do that again. I would never have Nebraska volleyball day at Memorial Stadium. I would leave it as the event that it was because you can never top that. The sequel's never as good. Yeah, you can never top That's that. True. I would leave that alone, and I would have that as a standalone one time. That was a Nebraska thing, and it was as good as it could get. And why try and do it again? Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, I'm just saying if they ever did have a bigger stadium and this thing came on down the road 10 years from now and you asked fans to fill it again, they would. Because that that it just goes to your point where you're talking about, I think the support locally for women's athletics, but also nationally that you're seeing some stars that align with, I think a big part of the success women's sports has had here in the last, I would say this has been a good three-year run. Post-COVID, this has been a really good run for women's athletics, the way that they're promoting the product. Because we've talked about this of, there have been stars. There have been players that young girls can relate to, that fans alike can relate to, that they can get behind because they're must-see type athletes, but you don't always know about them because they're not in the prime TV slots or it's not promoted uh, at the at the rate that you see a lot of the male sports promoted. Now you see a deep dive. And if you watch a lot of highlight shows in the last couple of years, you're going to see women's sports highlights part of the A block as much as you're going to see some of the men's stuff, depending on what's going on. They're going to sneak some of that in there as well. So it's 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 taking more of a front row seat. It's taking more of a front row stance. So I think the promotion of these events and a lot of these players is far better than it's ever been as well. Yeah, it's, it's the best time to be a girl. I mean, it, it really is. Uh, if you want to be in in sports. Now in women's basketball, there's more attention to the back of the jersey in volleyball, there's more attention to the front of the jersey. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just would would volleyball take the next step if there were more players that you knew what their back of the jersey looked like nationally? 
more like we do in in, in women's college uh, basketball. But the other thing I like when this is this is a kind of the unique how this state is built of 1.9 million people, where you know Nebraska holds a special place for a lot of people, and especially the football program. But Nebraska volleyball, and and I wish other sports would do this. They would get outside of Lincoln, either come to Omaha, which don't forget about us here in Omaha, or go to Kearney, go to Grand Island, go to Shadron, Scotts Bluff, wherever. And Nebraska Volleyball has been kind of the lead on this when they do their spring exhibition in small communities in Nebraska. The one thing I love that they always do is they don't put tickets online. Mm -hmm. They make you buy tickets in person. Yeah, Because you know why? If you're going to take an event like Nebraska Volleyball, and it's a road show, and we already know the popularity, and you go to a small community, you want those people to be in the building. You're yep. bringing, yeah, you you're bringing your brand to them. Yep. You're not bringing their, your brand to their city, and Lincoln and Omaha have better Ethernet connections, so they get gobbled <laughs> up all the tickets. So you get stories like yesterday. I mean, this just shows you where that program is and where that sport is in this state is you had people that were camping out, okay? It was cold. Yeah, yeah. It was cold in Buffalo County. And people Wet were sleeping too. in their car so yep. they could get in line early to go see an exhibition. We're not talking about a regional. We're talking about a spring exhibition against Denver where you're going to be in a 6,000-seat arena and you'll get an opportunity after it's over to stand in line and get autographs. I mean, that's that's pretty damn cool. But the fact that they only make you can only buy tickets in person, yeah. I think, is a great move because the people that are going to be there are the people that are in that community, and you brought your show yep. to them. Now, it also shows me that you know there's outside of uh, you know Doug and Daddy out in Kearney, there isn't a lot of sports talk outside of Lincoln and Omaha. And my God, there's probably way too much sports talk uh, in Lincoln and Omaha. But what do we talk about eighty percent of the time? That program in Lincoln. Is Nebraska athletics more popular outside of Lincoln and Omaha? Man, it's it's tough to say they're not. Uh, anytime, in, uh, this is my experience in central Nebraska. Anytime you go into a smaller town, you go into a Humphrey, you go into a Lee, you'd be driving through even, you would see different businesses that would have a, a mural, like North Bend. I don't know if they still have it, but when you go through North Bend, they've got this little mural of Nebraska football. I think it's of, of like Eric Crouch. Uh, you go through all these different towns and the Husker flags are flying. They've got all types of, of Nebraska fandom displayed. Maybe it's a flag flying at businesses and in their little downtown market area too. I'm not talking about just random houses too. And the example that we've seen, we saw it in Central City last year and we saw it yesterday in Buffalo County in the Kearney area too that if there is anything Husker related event that comes to your city, that comes to your town, there's, it's, it's an absolute smashing success. And so I, I think, I think clearly there's less distraction too. I mean, in, in Omaha and in Lincoln, you got some other things that can distract you from time to time too. In, in the smaller area, the smaller towns, the smaller communities, they love it. They're, they're into that. They're, they're passionate about baseball. They're passionate about softball. They're passionate about volleyball. Anything that the end has to do with, in my experience, it is front and center and it is building your day, building your weekend around that event, probably more so than what you see in Omaha and in Lincoln. I mean, can you imagine uh, Creighton basketball before this past season? They've got, they've got one of their stars is from Aurora, Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Creighton goes out and plays Carney or I don't know Shadron uh, out in Grand Island for an exhibition game instead of doing an exhibition game downtown. You don't think that would sell out in a matter of minutes? Oh, yeah. I mean that oh. that's I I I I think it's important for the three major universities to get outside of their cities or get outside of their normal arenas. Take a practice. You know what? Take. We, we used to do this, and, and this is one of the things I'm most proud of in my in minor league baseball history. We used to do a thing with the Fort Myers Miracle, and, and people have heard me talk about my experience there. We were owned by uh, Bill Murray and Jimmy Buffett and Mike Vex. So everything was on the table. We could be as wacky as we wanted. and that's Fun what, was that's, encouraged. Yeah, fun is good is kind of the mantra of, of the Gold Claim group that used to own us. Um, we would do a road show. So we would have little league organizations that would fill out a form and they would basically tell us why they wanted 
a night at a Fort Myers Miracle game to come to their Little League ballpark around one of their games. So we would take our roadshow of all of our promotions and some of our food and our wacky vendors, and we would go to a, a Little League game, and we would, you would play, you know, you would have like, you know, 10-year-olds playing against each yeah. other, but we would be doing all the game ops. Like our PA, awesome. guy, our PA guy, which was me, would you be there. Give We'd the have experience. our mascot, all of that kind of stuff. That's so so cool. you expanded your brand. I, I, I think it would be, you know. That's a great idea. Look at. Omaha soccer went and played at Omaha South in a. Yeah. I think I think Omaha and Creighton played an exhibition game. Uh, they That's, played. Didn't they play Nebraska's it, it, team one year too? Maybe it was. They went yeah. down and, and they they played at Omaha South in their beautiful stadium. Yeah. I mean, you're you're expanding your brand, okay? Union Omaha coming to play at Morrison Stadium, or they played at Omaha South, I believe. Okay, you've got a passionate soccer community in South Omaha. Okay, you 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 want them to support you. I. I've said I, I've told the guys at Omaha, hey, why not? Why not do you know take take the boys and uh, put them on the bus and go down to the ice box, and yeah. and put on an exhibition or a practice. Um, go to North Omaha, you know, put on a practice, uh, and and it's open to the public. You sign autographs, you have giveaways, all that kind of stuff. I, I love what Nebraska volleyball has started here, and I would like to see maybe somebody else take the next jump. I've I've advocated for Nebraska football, you know. Um, to in the spring, take a Saturday and take your show on the road for a practice. Go to Grand Island or come to Buell Stadium. Yeah. Okay. It's open to the public. You know, you'd have to make, you'd have to limit it because those stadiums would fill up quickly. But you put on a practice. You know, in the spring where people yep. can see you up close. You come to your fans instead of them always coming to you. I, I again, I love what Nebraska volleyball has started. It's become a great tradition. And I, I would love to see other, you know, either Omaha or Creighton or other Nebraska sports, you know, do something like this because I think the response would be very similar and it would be something to grow like we've seen with Nebraska Spring Exhibition, which is one of the cooler things in that sport outside of what they do during the regular season as a whole. Yeah, and, and again, this goes back to the sport of everything that it has to do with Nebraska, but if you even want to make it an in-state flavor too, there were times that we saw, and in fact, I think when... Haymarket Park opened. Wasn't it Wayne State that played Nebraska? I, I remember it being one of the first games that mm -hmm. they played on a weekday. And I know there was a time that you know Nebraska would play UNO even when they were Division Two. And yeah. you probably are going to see more of that in the fall than you would in the actual season itself. But I love the idea that you brought up Duncan Field and Hastings, and there's some other really great ballparks that you have throughout the the state, both central and western Nebraska. Uh, some some gorgeous Legion baseball fields, too, that a capacity you, you might have to bring in some portable seating. But I think it would be so cool to have Nebraska play maybe a fall ball game out in one of those places. Maybe you do play a Wayne State. Maybe you do play a, you know, a Doan. Uh, you know, somebody that you can – you can have a game with, you can involve two communities, but you're taking it outside of where people notice you. Because I, I do think that this is always something that can be strategic as well. It's a little tougher with volleyball because the thing I love about this with volleyball is just like the spring game, this might be one of the very few opportunities you can actually see this team up close and personal because of season tickets and because of the amount of sellouts. We know that is the case too sometimes with football. So the spring game serves that purpose where you can go to the stadium cheaper. You can experience at least to some extent the game day atmosphere, and then you're watching a glorified scrimmage in your seat for pretty cheap. You might not be able to afford that or have the ability to do that throughout the, the, the fall season. What I think about baseball is – you're going to get a lot of those fans. You see it all the time, Gary. Fans coming in from Kearney, you know, fans coming in from Shadron to make a weekend or at least a Saturday out of going to Haymarket Park. So you return the favor by going to their area where they can see you a lot closer, even if it's for maybe a cool weekend series, maybe a Friday and Saturday uh, scrimmage against a, a Division II or even a junior college team in the fall if you can get a Saturday and Sunday, especially that Sunday so you're not competing with football. I, I just think that – Sometimes we do take for granted how powerful that end brand is. And when you move it throughout the state, volleyball is a shining example of how people support Nebraska athletics and how it shows Nebraska athletics returning that support, returning that that love that they're getting. I, I just I, I think there are, I'm with you. I think there are more 
sports programs in the athletic department that could do that. But I, I like expanding even the idea of expanding that to Omaha hockey, Creighton basketball, hell, Omaha basketball as well, being able to do more events like this that get the entire state, not just your section of the state or your area of the state, but the entire state aware of you. And that gets them coming back and wanting to go to home events more. All right. Uh, when we come back, uh, yesterday was a defensive day down in uh, Lincoln. Interesting thing said by uh, Tony White uh, that if you didn't catch, I'm going to tell you what was uh, the thing that caught my ear uh, from the uh, Nebraska defensive coordinator. Matt DeMarinas is coming up in a half an hour. Get his thoughts on what he saw at uh, the Chuck last night with uh, Creighton is off to a 21-4 and start. And, of course, basketball. The season is over, but now the 24-25 season is just beginning. What does his gut say about two big decisions that could be upcoming? That's uh, going to be when Matt joins us at 8. Brandon Vogel at 940 as well on Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. All right, we are all into baseball. Major League Baseball is into its second week. You know now, college baseball, you got a little taste of Creighton and Nebraska last night. You probably went to ticketsforless.com to find tickets for the best seats, best prices, and no per ticket fees. Yeah, and you were at the Chuck last night. Well, you could be at Haymarket Park. You could be at the Chuck. You could be at the Tal. Whatever you want to do, or you could be at the K to watch baseball. The best selection of tickets to the Storm Chasers, the Royals, and everywhere else is courtesy of Tickets for Less. So when you root for the hometown heroes or cheer on your favorite MLB team, Tickets for Less has you covered. Plus, you can save on your next order when you use my promo code, The Zone. It's pretty simple. You get to check out. First of all, you're elated because Tickets for Less never has any per ticket fees. And use the promo code, The Zone. Yeah, you're like, man, this is awesome. Tickets for Less is your go-to source for tickets to all the hottest events from sports to concerts, theater, and more right here in this town and all around. So don't miss out. Visit ticketsforless.com today. And don't forget, on your next order, use my promo code, The Zone at ticketsforless.com. Gary Sharp, Nick Hanley, and Jimmy Chavez. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. Weekdays 6 to 10. On 1620 The Zone. 1620thezone.com The Connor Happer Show. Basketball is better than football. It's time to finally admit it to ourselves. This state has brainwashed you for years and years and years. Football this, football this. We have to talk about all these football topics. Who's going to be the fourth string running back this year? I'll never know. Does it matter? No, it doesn't. You ever notice how we're so happy right now and we haven't talked about football in weeks, Josh? Weeks. The Connor Happer Show. Weekdays from 10 to 2 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from a Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV Newswatch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Planning on a cool and windy Wednesday. There'll be some clouds around early, then giving way to tons of sunshine. Northwest winds, though, will be gusting around 40 miles per hour throughout the day with highs in the low 50s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV Newswatch 7. 1620 The Zone Traffic. From the Pyramid Roofing, time-saving traffic center. The earlier accident still has that I-480 southbound off-ramp to I-80 westbound closed. Pretty heavy stop-and-go traffic back to Leavenworth Street at this time. If this is part of your morning commute, Dodge westbound is an alternate option. And there is some slow traffic JFK northbound between Q Street and I-80. Please stay safe and wear that seatbelt. I'm Peter Krenzer. Time-saving traffic is brought to you by Pyramid Roofing. If you've seen the light trucks with Rufus, the spotted dog, then you know about Pyramid Roofing. Spring's almost here. Replace your siding, windows, roof, or gutters. Call Pyramid Roofing at 402-502-9300 or visit PyramidRoof.com. Never settle for less. Spring has arrived and Lanahan has everything you need to revitalize your landscape. Color perennials, shrubs, flowers, and fresh dug trees, all grown right here in Nebraska. Lanahan Nurseries, your homegrown headquarters since 1974. Are Nebraska craft beers and ciders important to you? Whether you just love Nebraska brewed beers and ciders or you're a full-fledged craft brewery, there are benefits to membership for anyone with the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild. Their sole mission is to foster and help grow the Nebraska-centric brewing community. Become a member today at Nebraska.beer and help advance the craft beer and cider industry in the state of Nebraska. Find out more about the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild at Nebraska.beer. 
College basketball's biggest tournament is coming, and it's time to start betting like a pro with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circa Sports Iowa is sports betting the way it should be. High betting limits, tight money line splits, exceptional customer service, and more. Fund and bet like a pro anywhere, anytime. It's never been easier. Download your new bookie before all of the March action at circasports.com. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7666. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to Hims.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. Join me, Jimmy Allen, for the Creighton Athletics Hour. We'll be talking all things Blue Jays and interviewing your favorite coaches, so you don't want to miss it. It's the Creighton Athletics Hour, Thursdays, starting at 6 o'clock, only on 1620 The Zone, 1620thezone.com, and your 1620 The Zone mobile app. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Roofing, siding, and gutters. Make the right call with the rooferies at John Higgins Weather Guard. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hamlet on 1620 The Zone. All right, just an alert for our uh, listeners in uh, Lincoln. You have uh, 30 minutes. You may have already be uh, lined up on uh, 56th and uh, Holdridge, which with uh, construction is already a mess. Uh, Runza, right there at uh, 56th and Holdridge. Mm-hmm. We'll be unveiling a limited supply of breakfast runs of sandwiches at the top of the hour. Not an April Fool's joke. This was legit. This is the real thing. Nick just crapped his pants. He is so happy right now. I don't know if I've ever seen you this happy. That's a, that's an odd re- that's an odd reaction. Please don't go into graphic detail. <laughs> no. But let's talk about the breakfast sandwich from Runza. Yeah, that is they, that is they doing in uh, thirty uh, minutes. <laughs> He's so happy. It doesn't look like it's. So I thought it was going to be hash browns. So it's scrambled eggs, ham, green peppers, onion, American cheese, cream cheese, and a blend of seasonings. I don't want cream cheese on that thing. Oh, Made with love. Uh, I would try it. From the picture, picture, it doesn't look great. Yeah, I did see the picture. It looks looks like there's a lot of bread with it. Um, Yes. I'm I'm okay with cream cheese. I'm okay with it. Mm. Yeah. You ever have cream? Do you like cream cheese on your pizza? No, oh. I do. Oh. I've had this discussion before. No, yeah. no, okay. no. I'm um, if, yeah, see, if, if I'm going to get nitpicky, I, I don't want ham. I want sausage or I know bacon might be unattainable to keep it to its uh, desired crispiness, but I, I would prefer breakfast chicken. sausage over ham. I mean, this is huge news. I, I expect a full report by any of our listeners that are in line. Please do to, uh, get this, but I'm glad you brought it up because we do have a problem in this country. We, we don't have a lot of problems in this country. Trust me. <laughs> you. I'm listening. At least by eight o'clock this morning. Okay. Um, the the bread to meat ratio is way out of whack. Yes. I don't know if it was Bin Laden, if it was <laughs> or what happened. 
<laughs> but the bread to meat ratio is lopsided, and we need to fix that. It may be your local politician. It may be your local chef. It may be your national politician. It may yeah. be the president, even of your own university. <laughs> we have to put back the, the equal amount of bread to meat because we are not getting our money's worth, and all we're getting is a mouthful of bread where most people would like a mouthful of meat. Yeah, so I, I agree with that. And to use the breakfast runs as part? an example. <laughs> based, on, <laughs> based on the photo. All right, here's this is this is maybe what I think a standard should be. If you look at just the breakfast runs of photos, they cut into the middle of it. I'm just by eyeballing it, the bottom portion of the bread and the and the top portion of the bread, if you combined those two, it looks like it is more dense than the filling. I think the filling, and I understand sometimes it, it, it you got to have that support so it doesn't like leak through or food get through, but I feel like at least the filling, and in this case, we're talking eggs and ham and cheese and and seasoning and whatever else is with it. I think it should be equal, if not greater, than the total density of the bun or the bread. In this case, I think we're yeah. looking at probably a 75 to 25 ratio of bread to filling, which I, it's just too much. It's too out of whack. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's an epidemic in this country uh, that we need to uh, – I don't, I don't hear a lot of people talking about it. I'm here to talk about it. It's out of whack, and we must fix it. We just – with more meat, less bread. There's bread is important, but we've got to have the meat because you're cutting down on the meat and you're giving me more bread. And I don't want a mouthful of bread. Nick likes a mouthful of meat. I like, I don't want a mouthful of bread. Okay. Maybe I'm speaking. I, I don't want to, I don't want to put things in your mouth. <laughs> hey, hey. So Matt DeMarino is going to join us here in a little bit. Uh, from... <laughs> He's like, yes, hey, I am. Hey, I just, have, I just hopped in my cyber truck and I'm keeping it moving. Um, so I was listening to Tony White yesterday, and I could listen to Tony White all day, and I could probably have a little bit more Larry Tarver and Demetrius Bell in my life, who spring is, you know, March Madness creates stars. Spring brings us names that get repeated over and over. Larry Tarver is either going to be one of the disappointments of Nebraska football, or he's going to be the greatest player of all time. There's going to, or there's going to be somewhere in between. So I've left myself a lot of wheel room here, but. A lot of people talk about Larry Tarver um, as a freshman. I can't wait to see Demetrius Bell because he has been talked about for really since he stepped on campus. And he's being talked about like on a daily basis. When, when offensive guys talk about a defensive guy that is young or vice versa, then my ears perk up. But something also I perked up yesterday, listening to Tony White and the players that uh, spoke to the media, it was a defensive day. What do they know that we don't about this 24 team? As far as the expectations that they're set for this defense. Man, I, 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 I'm going to be more, I, I'm going to tell you this right now on the 3rd of April, I'm more interested in the last five games of the season than I am in the first seven. You can give me seven to no, but if Nebraska finishes seven and five, what are we doing? Another winless November. Yeah. My interest is in the last end. I, I, I like the back. You like the front. Not you in particular, Nick, but some people may go, I just like the seven. Um, but but the way that that players and and guys talk, and, and, and again, a little bit it's towards defense where they're a little bit older mm -hmm. and they have uh, some depth there. Just the way they talk. Year two becomes the pop year. Like Matt Rule lives with the year three. So he's six and six and seven and six and Temple and Baylor in year number two. Yep. Those records would be unacceptable this year, in my opinion, at Nebraska. Again, if you go seven and oh and you finish seven and six, how you feeling? You shouldn't feel very good. Six and six and seven and six this year would be, hmm, that wouldn't do anything for me. But with a veteran defense where they are, are, are talking out loud about being the best defense, and you could talk things into existence if you have the right pieces to follow through. But the way that they are coaching this team and they are pushing this team, they know something that we don't yet or we're not willing to admit. 
Because I think this year becomes the pop year of if we're going to set expectations and drive guys to reach their ability, this is the year it pops and then it takes off. Or if it doesn't, then you're like, "Uh uh-oh, back-to-back years sitting at home in December. Now, I don't believe that will be the case, but they know something that we don't. And I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah, it's. I, I I wonder if it is more about. There's the obvious of who you have returning, but also returning into more of the known as opposed to the unknown with this coaching staff. What to expect? What they're getting out of this spring compared to what they were going to get out of last spring to set them up for success? Because the I, the conversation always was last year when it came to this defense is. What is that scheme going to look like? But more importantly, how's the defensive line going to hold up? How many of these young players are going to reasonably impact this defense as opposed to out of necessity? And you got that answer. You saw that defensive line. You saw a lot of freshmen that impacted the lineup, not because they had to, because there was a run of injuries, but because they were that good. And we were joking about Cam Lenhart and his overall mature look but that's a, I mean, that's a man right there. Riley Van Poppel, that's a man. Nash Hutmacher, even at 295 yesterday, who does look nice and slim. He's very, 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 uh, very trim right now. That's a dude. Ty Robinson looks, uh, it, so you start there, but it, there is the physical part of this defense and the, the competition in the secondary. And even with losing a Reimer and a, and a Henrich, but also knowing that you have a, a Buddha right, knowing that you do have, uh, a Gaber, knowing that you have a Stefan Thompson who's aware of this and is familiar with this system. I, I still do think there is part of knowing what to expect from day one in spring, knowing what to expect from this coaching staff on how they can take exactly that body of work a year ago and parlay that into an even better year. When you're a top 20 defense in year number one and you have the majority of those guys coming back, it's not always, okay, well, you can naturally just expect them to take a major step forward. Sure, you can, as long as everybody is understanding of what that expectation is. Like the thing I loved about what Tony White had to say yesterday is this group, as it is now, hasn't accomplished anything. And he's saying that publicly. He's saying that internally. That coaching staff is saying that internally. That's why I'm saying the way they're pushing them, mm-hmm. they know there's a button to be pushed, that they know something that we don't. Or maybe we are more hesitant to go there because uh, uh, it's April 3rd and I don't want to hear the word Kool-Aid. Okay, I haven't gone out to Hastings yet to visit the museum. When I do, I'm all in. Um, But I'm going to give you a a, a thing here. This might be a year two thing at Nebraska. Um, So rule six and six, seven and six in year number two. Four of the last five head coaches at Nebraska have had a losing record in their first year. The only guy that didn't was Bo and he was nine and four. And, and and Bo actually inherited a, a fairly good roster. But year two, Bo Pelini, or actually let's start with Bill Callahan. Remember what year two of Bill Callahan was like? That wasn't bad. No. Nope. They were eight and four. Mm-hmm. Bo was 10 and four in year two. Mike Riley was nine and four mm-hmm. in year two. Interesting. They got off to a really good start before the schedule got tough that year. Seven and oh. Okay. They were nine and four. The only person in the last four head coaches that had a losing record in their second year was Scott Frost, who was five and seven. So there is, it's not like it's unprecedented to be bad your first year, minimal progress year two, and then it goes off in year three. But we've all heard about year three is when it works for rule. I think he said, no, year two is when it works. And if it works, it means even more because it is a jumping off point to another level. Because if you push guys and you build your roster this way and it doesn't work and you don't get the intended goal of playing football in December, feeling good about a record that you put in a media guide, then you got to go, ooh, now what's the next thing? But he, I, I, the, the one thing I can appreciate about Rule, and so far so good, is he'll say things, and then he'll act them out, or they'll they'll start to come to fruition. He told his older guys last year, "Stick with me. This year's going to be a little bit rough. 
It, you're going to get to know me. I'm going to get to know you. But if you stick with me, year two is when we're going to help you reach your goals. He said that not only to one of his first meetings with his older group of players that were on the roster when he took over, but he has also said that to the portal guys. Hey, year one is going to be a transition. You're coming from places where you did things differently, whether it be in the locker room or on the field, but stick with me because we're going to develop you in year two. What did we hear yesterday? We heard guys that kind of were partially on a milk carton all of a sudden, look different, feel different, act different in year two in this program as a transfer from MJ Sherman to Elijah Judy, who is, by the way, congratulations, now a new father. So I don't know. It it's it's there's there's something there, especially on the defensive side of the ball, with guys that are longer in the tooth that they see, that they believe that they're trying to talk into existence. And it's very I'm, I, as a curious person. I'm wondering exactly what that is. It can't just be we're older, we're bigger, we're stronger. There has to be something that they're seeing that we don't know yet on why they all feel that this year is like the year to pop. I'm excited to find out what that is because I I think there's a lot of pieces that make it intriguing. I, I would even add to this one too, Gary, the retention in the college football world where the volatility of the transfer portal, what Nebraska as a roster, but especially on that defensive side, given the guys that you were going to lose because of eligibility and graduation, I, I should say. But if you have guys that go to the NFL draft, if you have guys that decide, you know, I got another year or two, I'm going to give it a push somewhere else. That retention, I think, was huge. And this goes back to the message you bring up from Matt Rule. There's the follow through, yes, where he's very consistent of what he says and what he does. But I think also there's the example of the players falling in line on that too, where they're excited about that, where they're they're allowing themselves to be patient with that process. And he even said, you're right, he mentioned last year that they didn't feel like it was that typical year one, like it was at Baylor, like like it was at Temple. So you felt that that timetable, and I know we're all about timetables here. If it's not going to be in year one, when is it going to be? Because we want to see this team in a bowl game. We want to see the looks of a team that looks like it's on the cusp of getting back to respectability when it comes to the win-loss record. There's a lot that he put out there a year ago that I'm not surprised by these expectations that – Matt Rule and Tony White are putting on their team of having that high standard. What it ends up being in 24, we'll all wait and see. But this is something you could do this year as opposed to not being able to do that last year. So uh, he made a comment on the side that is kind of curious, and this was before spring, is they have more guys on the roster that can help them win games than they have on the roster that can help them lose games. I thought that was a fascinating comment. I, it didn't pop back into my head until just now. They have more guys on their roster that can help them win games than guys on the roster that can help them lose games. Think about that. Um, all right. Uh, Matt DeMarinas, uh, a little bit after uh, eight. Uh, there's Nick. I'm Gary. Jimmy here as well. Brandon Vogel a little bit later. We'll get his thoughts on uh, now that we're into week two of uh, spring ball and some names to know. And if it's a good thing or a bad thing, if Malcolm Hartsog doesn't play much this year. That's to come when Brandon joins us coming up at 940 on Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. As you know, uh, we went from March Madness into April, and the sports calendar is packed. Just look at your youth schedule that's on your fridge or look at your favorite team, and you're like, oh, my gosh. Well, FanDuel is going to help you out because they're going to make it even more exciting. Oh, what? Yes, because right now, new customers of FanDuel, you can get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks if you can use it to bet on the tourney, M- MLB, NBA, NHL, or cricket, like Nick likes to bet on. I love cricket, absolutely. And as we get into, you mentioned Major League Baseball, but now we are in the best part of the NHL, the NBA, where you got playoffs just around the corner. NBA play in begins on the 16th of this month. NHL, Stanley Cup playoffs, which is some of the best just around the corner. You can get in all the action, whether it's making a parlay, whether it's just going with the money line. So many ways to bet and get in on the action with FanDuel. Use the promo code ZONE to get in on all of the action. That's FanDuel.com. 
promo code zone. Make every moment more with FanDuel. 21 plus and present in Iowa. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max bonus $25 per game. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com. Big names, big games. We've got them all. 1620 The Zone. Is reviewing life insurance on your to-do list? Now's the perfect time to add it. A friend recently told me that securing life insurance sooner rather than later can help you lock in lower rates for years to come. So I bumped this up on my list and got it done. I called Select Quote and couldn't believe how easy and affordable life insurance is. I'm 40 and got a $500,000 policy for $16 a month. My husband's also 40 and his $500,000 policy was only $18 a month. Plus, with Select Quote's same day coverage, there was no medical exam required and we were covered by the time we hung up. Knowing I have this checked off my list feels amazing, but the peace of mind knowing my family is protected feels even better. Call Select Quote at 1 800 670 5151. That's 1 800 670 5151. Or go to SelectQuote.com to get your free quote today. 1 800 670 5151. Details on example rate at SelectQuote.com. Getting your biggest tax refund from Jackson Hewitt can lead to some spirited reactions. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Jackson Hewitt is so sure they'll get you your biggest refund that if they don't, you get your money back plus 100 bucks. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Switch to Jackson Hewitt and we'll beat what you paid last year, even if you filed online. Hewitt, yeah! Ain't nothing to it. Switch to Jackson Hewitt and pay less for tax prep, guaranteed. Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency on earth. And if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes and further rate hikes are expected. Most people don't know it, but the IRS adds interest charges to your tax debts daily. So if you owe the IRS today, you'll owe even more tomorrow. And it doesn't stop until you get right with the IRS. The good news is getting right can start with one phone call to Optima Tax Relief, America's number one tax relief firm. Optima's tax professionals specialize in the Fresh Start Initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800-348-0269. 800 348 800-348-0269. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. John and Josh here for the FanDuel Sportsbook. This sports calendar is absolutely loaded. The NCAA tournament's wrapping up. Major League Baseball has just begun. The NBA is into the stretch drive for the playoffs, and so too is the NHL. Plus, there's the UFL. I know, you still want to bet football. Right now, new customers at FanDuel can get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash 1620. Make that first big bet a big win. $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. John, so much going on right now. The end of the college basketball seasons, the baseball season has begun, and of course, playoff action is almost here in the NBA and NHL. New customers, again, go to FanDuel.com slash 1620, and you get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet, fanduel.com slash 
1620. 21 plus in President Iowa. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit is required. Bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 bets off. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Ham. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. I was uh, bummed to hear the news yesterday that uh, Joe Flaherty had passed away at the age of uh, 82. Uh, known for his time on SCTV, the Freak, legend, Freaks and Geeks, a uh, little cameo in Happy Gilmore. But it did allow me to go back on YouTube and go down the rabbit hole, Nick and Jimmy, of SCTV, how great it was. Mm-hmm. Um, Joe Flaherty was like never not funny. I mean, he 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 blowed up real good. Yeah, I I, I the I will always know him as Jackass. I, always. Yes. I mean, that's that's what it, it's a cult classic. It's it's an amazing movie. And you're you're right that there's way more about Joe Flaherty. But for people who probably have their most recent memory. Yeah, it is. You will not make this putt, you jackass. That whole scene, that whole back and forth was phenomenal. I mean, you had a Western uh, Union courier that uh, made Big Bird into a traveling uh, carnival uh, attraction. <laughs> Big Jim McBob. McBob. SCTV was so good. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was also out of Chicago's second city, which has produced, I mean, just a legendary uh, resume of comedians. But man, SCTV like was so funny. It was a who's who. And and it yeah. used to be, was it just Friday nights uh, that it would air after, you know, like Carson Daly had a late night show on NBC. And I think it was like at midnight on Friday nights, SCTV would air in the in the U.S. And it it was sketch after sketch was hilarious. And, you know, I mean, the, the Canadian actors that were on there just brought it. But man, that, that guy, that guy had so many different parts. And he, again, he was never not funny. Yeah. Well, and think, think of all the sketch shows that followed because that, that one had a run probably till like the mid eighties. If mm-hmm. I remember that correctly, it's probably mid eighties. And I mean, you get to see reruns of it. So it wasn't like if you weren't in that era, you would totally miss out on it. But in, if my memory serves, that's when all the sketch comedy really took off after that you had so many different ones that maybe stuck around for a few years some were complete busts but that was probably one of the the real good ones that kind of got that whole line of sitcoms or, or comedy started it, it was it, it was fantastic and it, it just you know it still goes strong to this very day yeah uh i mean when when, when one of your best parts is you heckled adam sandler on the golf course <laughs> i mean that, that's a pretty good life uh all right. Uh, <laughs> I mean that the, so the clip, and then, then he asked him, you know, then that starts the, uh, the sideways conversation with Bob Barker. Oh yeah. He didn't, you know, he forgot about prices, right? You're right. That leads to, to that. Yes. That's yes. that iconic back and forth leads to probably the most iconic back and forth when Bob Barker and happy Gilmore get into a fist fight. So yes. you can credit him for that as well. All right. Matty D Matt D Marina is going to join us uh, next on mornings with Sharp and Hanley and Jimmy on 1620 the zone. Hey, make plans for tomorrow. What are you doing tomorrow? Hey, you might be going to the Jet Award. You might go into a, you know, a nice little event. You might have a wedding this weekend. You might have prom. You might have graduation right around the corner. You must have Lindley Clothing in your life. Men, they have been dressing us for over 88 years. They have taken care of me. My fit looks a lot better. Wait till you see me at the Jet Award tomorrow night. Yeah, I'll be tailored by Lindley Clothing. I stopped in and said hello to John the other day, and I said, okay. Well, we got to do something here because I got a couple of events coming up. I got to look good. And he said, you know what? I think a Jack Victor would look good on you. And I said, I don't usually wear Jack. He said, oh, Jack will look good on you. Or let's go over to Well Suited. Yeah, if you've not heard about Well Suited, you're familiar with Lindley Clothing, which is an absolute banger. From suits to sportswear to tailored clothing, they've got it all at 132nd and West Dodge in the Linden Market. But now they have Well Suited right next door, connected by a tunnel, and it is a game changer. Bright colors. Great prices, great clothing, great customer service, all in one. And even better, tomorrow starts their spring sale from April 4th to the 14th, where you can get 15% off selected items. Buy one, get one. You can't miss it. Lindley Clothing and Well Suited together, heck of a pair to get us the right fit for men. 132nd West Dodge in the Linden Market. More with Gary and Nick after the coffee studio. This is 1620 The Zone. More with Gary and Nick after this on 1620 The Zone. 1620 The Zone. Traffic. 
from the Pyramid Roofing Time Saving Traffic Center. The I-480 southbound off-ramp to I-80 westbound still closed due to that earlier accident. This has stop and go traffic back to Leavenworth. As a result, some pretty heavy traffic in these alternate routes. L Street westbound very slow between 24th and 42nd and JFK northbound slowing down between Chandler and F. Reports of a disabled semi westbound F Street at 72nd. If you are approaching this intersection from 84th northbound, some lanes are shut down so it'll get a little slow around there. Please stay safe and wear that seatbelt. I'm Peter Krenzer. This time-saving traffic was brought to you by the Nebraska Lottery. The Nebraska Lottery has raised over $978 million, which has helped provide more than 117,000 college scholarships, save wildlife habitats across the state, and fund new facilities at the Nebraska State Fair. The Nebraska Lottery, helping to build a better Nebraska. When it comes to concrete repair, Everlevel has some serious game. Coach Greg McDermott here to coach you on why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. They've got the fundamentals to fix your cracked and uneven concrete, and their products will give you the best defense against future damage. It's a fraction of the price compared to replacement, and their solutions come with a long-term transferable warranty. Working with Everlevel is a slam dunk. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today for your free inspection. When I heard the words, you have breast cancer, I said, I have no idea what I'm going to do. My OBGYN called me and said, I know exactly what we're going to do, which led me to Nebraska Cancer Specialists. From day one, I felt that I was at the right place. There were some pretty rough times, but together we are stronger and they are there for you. You do not feel that you are alone. NebraskaCancer.com do you like to shoot fireworks? Would you like to get paid to shoot fireworks? JM Displays wants you. Help shoot an Omaha Storm Chasers game, Memorial Park Display, or any of the major shows in Western Iowa and all of Nebraska. If you like to travel, JM covers Nebraska, Kansas, and most of Missouri. They offer free training and great daily pay rates, which makes it a perfect part time job. Visit JMDisplays.com and click the Join Our Team tab to find out more. JM Fireworks. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. Many people go back to the dealership out of habit or because they think the dealer is the only one who knows how to fix their car. At Omaha Car Care, we offer a better option. We have ASE certified technicians, the technology to service any vehicle, and free loaner cars. The dealer will sell you a package of services. We'll provide the service you want for your car as your trusted partner. I'm Rick Betker, owner of Omaha Car Care, and we'll be along for the ride. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Now back to Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. On 1620 The Zone. Hey, head to 1620thezone.com right now. Check your picks. And the basketball championship winner will receive $100 to cops in Omaha. Check the leaderboard at 1620thezone.com. All right, last night downtown, Creighton defeated uh, Nebraska in baseball 5 3. Creighton now 21 and 4. Back uh, tonight here on the zone, they take on North Dakota State. Uh, and then a uh, Big East weekend up ahead. We welcome in our good friend from White and Blue Review, Matt DeMarinas. Good morning, my friend. Good morning, guys. How are we doing? Whoa. This is a really early morning for you. You got a cold? Uh, actually, no, yeah. Actually, this is John Walker's fault, by the way. Uh, oh. He was sick in Detroit, and then we hung out oh. for the night before the game. So, yeah. I played him. 
Mm. All right. Well, throwing him under the bus. That's okay. I mean, he right, he, he, des- he deserves to be. Um. All right. So let's first start with baseball. You can be twenty-one and four, and you could say, "Well, they haven't played anybody." But twenty-one and four is twenty-one and four, and I look at last night where probably more people got to see Creighton in person last night than they have leading up to that. And it's a good lineup, one through nine. They're aggressive. They've got options either on the weekend or out of the bullpen. Why is why is Creighton baseball off to their best start since 86, in your opinion, Matt? Yeah, that's a good question. It's kind of a combination of a few things. You know, because last year I felt like Last year, I felt like it was one of the worst Creighton teams I covered just in terms of being Creighton-like and to see the script kind of flipped, you know, just one year later is really interesting to me. But, you know, they added some good guys out of the portal, like Teddy Dieters and Will McClain were really, really good additions for them. Even even just before you saw them, you said, okay, those are guys that clearly have the ability to impact the lineup. And then, you know, you get Jack Grace back, Nolan Taylors, Nolan Clifford. Uh, those are all really experienced dudes. Logan Oleso is solid behind the behind the dish. So you see there's like some pieces there that mm-hmm. they can put it all together, get off to a good start, that they can kind of really push towards having a good season. And I think that's what's happened. You know, those, those pieces all came together. Um they got off to a good start, and they have just kept the train rolling. And then last night was probably their their stiffest test of the season. I think everyone was kind of anticipating it being Stanford, but Stanford's kind of struggled this year. So they just kind of took care of business out there um, against Stanford, even though that's weird to say, considering where both teams were in the offseason. Um, but yeah, last night was kind of a lit test. Nebraska had, I think, their 10th in RPI. It hasn't updated yet, but... You know, that's a that's a marquee win for the Jays. And now you're starting to think like, okay, if you can keep the keep the train on the tracks and handle business in Big East play, which is probably having its one of its better years, um, in terms of maybe depth at the top. Yeah. You could probably get yourself in a conversation to host a regional if you keep it going. Um, so they're they're in a position to do that now. So it's all about how they handle the pressure now of expectation, because that's what what shifts when you get out to a good start like that. But I think the keys for it are, you know, the depth in the lineup, you know, that kind of aggressive approach that you're seeing where they're not really, I just don't see them wasting very many opportunities to put balls in play or make a defense have to make a play to beat them. I thought last year there were a lot of, you know, uncompetitive at bats where they just kind of let the pitchers dictate and didn't really put pressure on a defense. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think this year that's a lot different offensively. And then defensively and pitching wise, they're just they're just, you know I don't think they're perfect, but they're certainly good under pressure. And I think that's a big key to having a successful season when you can put all those components together. And I think that was all on display last night too. I was asked the question, Matt, before the game of ultimately what I thought would happen. It was tough for me to answer because even though I've seen Creighton in person more than I have Nebraska, I felt like I knew a little bit more about Nebraska than I know with Creighton. And you bring up a lot of the the components that have stood out this year. I I do feel, and, and last night didn't impact my decision one way or another. I think this this team can hit with anybody. I, I truly think that. I I think from a mental standpoint, their approach is good. I, physically, this is a big team. They're, these are strong kids out there, strong men out there. It's the pitching. And the bullpen is one of those things, and you saw this too, Matt, during that homestand when they had UMass Lowell and Portland and South Dakota State. The ability to throw strikes has been somewhat of a challenge. This is going on in college baseball. It's not just a crane thing, too. I thought last night that was a a good step in the right direction on something that I think is going to be the difference between Creighton being a good team record wise to being a legitimate NCAA tournament team that could make some noise there. I think last night, I'm with you. This was this was their stiffest test. But I think a lot of those guys that you saw on display yesterday are what represents their bullpen. I think for the most part, that was probably as good as you could have hoped for considering who you're up against and what you got from a balls and strike situation. Yeah, no, 100%. Because, I mean, even 
you know, midweek games are weird, right? Because you get your, your, yeah. your, your, uh, the guys you go to out of the pen are kind of out of sequence, mm-hmm. right? But I think you had three good outings, really good outings last night from guys that are going to be hammering down the end of your games. Like Malachi Detock was great to start the game. Yep. Uh, Shane Curtin was a good setup. Um, and then Mason Cook just, I mean, Nebraska didn't have a chance against him last night. I mean, he right. just, I don't know when's the last time you've seen a, you know, a guy, you know, take the mound for the Jays and you just feel like the game's over. Like, you just, yeah. you just feel like no matter who's coming to the plate, they have no chance to do anything dangerous, you know, because he just, he just came in and it was punch out, punch out. I mean, I think the the pop up was weak. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, the walk was on a full count. Like he was competitive in that at bat. You know, so yeah. it wasn't like he gave away anything. You know, he made Nebraska earn every single thing that they could possibly get against him. And the same was true for V to start the game. And the same was true with Mason Cook with his you know with his off speed stuff. Yeah. Um, or Shane Curtin, excuse me. Um, so yeah, I like those three guys are going to be. You know, it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of. I mean, this is not the same. It's not apples to apples here, but you know that that World Championship Royals team, where you know you had guys up and down the lineup that oh. you know maybe you don't have any All Stars or All Americans, um, but they're just tough at bats. They don't waste pitches. They make you. Yep. They make you. They make you make them. Make you get them out. Essentially, they don't. They don't look at strikes. They don't um, strike out. They put the ball in play. They put pressure on your defense. And then pitching wise, you know, they have enough quality arms on the mound starting wise to get you into the middle of the game. And if you're leading at that point, then they have three dudes that can roll out at the end of the game and just like absolutely put it away. So it makes it, it, it shrinks the game up to the point where you have to beat Creighton within the first five or six innings. Otherwise, you're kind of in trouble. Matt D. Marinas from White and Blue Review joining us. Um, I, I think back to our conversation on Thursday about breaking down Creighton, Tennessee, and a lot of things we talked about turned out to be true or things that you were cautious about. Great wrap-up, you and Jacob uh, kind of wrapping up the reaction to that game. So it moves forward. Before we talk about roster and decisions, two years ago, we were at Dickey's Arena. Creighton gets beat by Kansas. Kalkbrenner was injured, but it was a hell of an effort against what would go on to be the national championship team. Two years later, walking off the floor the week later after going to the second weekend for two straight years. Where is the Creighton basketball program two years ago to compare where it is now and where it's headed? Hmm. I mean, I think it's in a healthy spot. I think, I think there's some, there's some dueling variables right now because this is likely the end of an era of players. Um, but I mean, also like, we don't know, like they, they, they could get a couple guys back. that could, again, just continue what we've seen so far. So it might not be the end, um, but it feels like the end of an era of players, right? It feels like the end of the Doug era. It feels like the end of the Corver era. It feels like, you know, that, that it's, there's a restart about to happen here, but it's a restart from a place that Creighton's never restarted from. And I think that's the important part of it is, um, when you try to draw the line from, you know, what that class of freshmen of Trey Alexander, Nemhart, Kaluma, Kalkbrenner was in in handing in taking the baton over from Mitch Ballack and mm-hmm. Marcus Zagorowski and Damian Jefferson and those guys, it's it's continued to move, you know, up a level here where your expectation now is that not only do you make the NCAA tournament, but you win a game in the NCAA tournament, and you give yourself a chance to go on a deep run in the NCAA tournament. I think that's a place that Creighton has never been before. Um, it's a standard that hasn't been established yet, because before, even with Dana's best teams or Mac's best teams prior to this point, the, the standard was kind of just get to the NCAA tournament, get a good matchup, and hope for the best. Now it's get to the NCAA tournament, take out that first opponent, and you know, swing away at whatever comes at you after that, but um, the goals are a lot loftier than they ever have been. And I think that, you know, what this class established is, is the big reason for that, because now you expect it more than you hope for it. 
Matt, I don't want to make it. I don't want to downplay the types of players they've been able to bring in and the impact they've had because we've seen some. We've seen a run of some incredible players, but in a in a time for this program in being able to build the roster back up, the system that's in place, the scheme, and then also the culture. Is it is it lead itself to to continue to expect to get those types of contributors year in and year out to be able to find the Baylor Shiremans of the world to be able to find the even the Stephen Ashworths of the world when we're talking transfer portal that you can get that quick fix because of the system and the culture that Creighton has in place. No, one hundred percent. I don't even think that. Yeah, that's probably like the baseline expectation, honestly, when it comes to personnel. Um, because you've just seen the way they've put it together, you know, they've, they've recruited really well out of, out of the high school core and developed that way. Um, you know, you've got your core leaders that come from that, but you also have, I think they've done a really good job of embracing what this new world kind of looks like, where you can build teams in multiple ways. You know, some programs do it exclusively through, you know, high school, McDonald's All Americans, and then some do it through exclusively the transfer portal and experience guys, and just try to build the oldest team they possibly can. And then you have some teams like, you know, UConn and Creighton who do it kind of both ways. They will get, you know, they'll identify the guys they think they fit their system out of high school, even if they don't have, you know, like top ten um, rankings next to their name or whatnot, and then they'll plug you know, veteran um, talent around them through the transfer portal. And I think that's what you've seen through some of those programs like Creighton and UConn. And I think that's what the Jays kind of formula is going forward here with Greg McDermott and his staff is, you know, let's let's not ignore one or the other. Let's, let's utilize both for what they are and see if we can put together the best combination of, of personnel to be successful. And I think there's some things that they'll even try to enhance. You know, I think they'll try to get, you know, that Tennessee game and the San Diego State game both are both kind of similar losses, not in, you know, how they happen Mm -hmm. at the end of the game, um, but in the way they played out. You know, Creighton didn't, Creighton wasn't a foolproof, uh, you know, team this year, and they really haven't been. Um, They're good at what they do, but. You know, when you're in a game with, and I, you know, the Tennessee game was really physical. It's probably one of the most physical games I've ever witnessed. Um, and but the officials were consistent, honestly. Like n- none of them made the Final Four, so I don't think they were graded very well on how they called the game. But they they were consistent with the physicality they allowed to happen. Mm-hmm. And that, if you're consistent with the physicality, then it's up to the players to kind of adjust to that and deal with it. And I think Tennessee dealt with it, obviously. Thank you better because it fit their system more. Um, so Creighton, I think, needs to needs to build a team that's more foolproof in terms of dealing with that and combating that and overcoming that. And that way, no matter what kind of officiating you get, you can still be able to dictate your style on the game. So I think that's the challenge is kind of getting a little bit bigger, stronger, fit more physical on the wing and still being able to play Creighton basketball where you're you know, running up and down the floor, sharing it, spacing it, shooting it. Um, the combination of those components is probably the next step for Creighton. And then when that happens, you'll be able to see, um, you'll, they'll raise the standard even further to where you're expecting, you know, uh, some Final Four runs and things like that. Do you have a feel for a timeline of Ryan Kalkbrenner and Trey Alexander's decisions? I do not. Um yeah, I don't even have a best guess, honestly, because it's just it just kind of depends on what they're prioritizing this time around and what their feedback is. I think the the type of draft we're seeing and this year certainly, I think they have better prospects of landing jobs in the NBA this year based on the talent pool, and then I think even next year is shaping up to be one that could. Um, be another easy one too so i mean they have that's that's the interesting part is like these next two drafts they kind of have opportunities to come back but i think the thing that's going to be tough for them is i get the sense that they enjoy being at creighton more than they've ever enjoyed being at creighton i think that's going to be the hard pull away is there's still like a 
there's a, there's a love there. There's a bond there that's even stronger than it was last year. I think last year there was a lot of just pain um, from the way it ended and um, then seeing, like, for Trey and Ryan, seeing Nemhard and Kaluma leave and kind of wondering, um, you know, what, what am I coming back for or what am I leaving for? Those were harder things to, to compartmentalize in their mind. But I think this year, I think they have a more firm understanding of what the what the pros and cons are of each decision, and that will probably make it um, probably a little bit tougher, honestly, because I think they love Creighton more than they have in the past. They have a better understanding of their roles as leaders, but they also know that this is probably their best opportunity um, to go pro and, and get a good job playing basketball. So it'll be an interesting decision. I don't have a timeline for it. I think it'll be a tough one for sure. Matt, a guy that we know is not going to be a part of Creighton. Uh, I'm curious your thoughts on the, the type of situation that you find Josiah Dotzler in next, where he, where he might wind up if you've any, any feels one way or another, if maybe even staying close to home. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think he's, I think he, belongs in Omaha, you know, because I think he just, he's a big part of this community and his family certainly is. But the other part of it is too, I also think that, you know, when I look at what that family has done for Omaha, I can, I can kind of imagine him going somewhere else and just being a little bit of a branch for that, um, for that calling in a different area. You know, I could see it kind of, you know, where he kind of uses the buy to change a different community, um, even as much as Omaha means to them and him. You know, I think with Josiah, the type of person he is won't change with wherever he goes. And I think from I think it's a I think it's an important part of who he is as a player, too, because I think that's going to be I think that's always going to be a part of wherever he goes is, you know, the kind of the philanthrop the philanthrop. I don't know how to say that word philanthropot philanthrop. Philanthropic? Philanthropic, that's it. Yeah, I knew there was like a different syllable in between. <laughs> um, my bad. Um, yeah, like I think that's going to be a big part of it, you know, being able to help whatever community he's in and, and build up whatever community he's in is a big part of it more than just the basketball part. But I think the, you know, I'm not sure where the basketball part fits in. I think there are, I was really impressed with him in the summer, but certainly those freshman struggles were were real and those are hurdles that that have to be cleared there so i think there's still some development there i don't think he is necessarily a guy who's going to kind of hit the ground running wherever he goes um on court so i think those two things will be part of the decision wherever he can develop as a player and wherever he feels like he can have an impact in a community will probably be the fit that he chooses i think and omaha could be yeah a place where he still stays for sure uh we'll get chatter on this so you know, Creighton's got three really good freshmen coming in. So there's their their core of, you know, this this team was kind of the Ale- the Alexanders and Kalkbrenners were original CU guys. Then they've cast this wide net in the portal, kind of protect themselves if somebody decides that they're not coming back, they have they can transition to the next option. But as we look at the current roster that have decisions to make and already uh, two in the portal, what do you think the roadmap for Fred King looks like at Creighton? I don't know. It just depends on kind of what what he wants for his basketball or his college experience, I guess. Because I don't know that I saw anything this year that you know leads me to think that he's an heir apparent to Kaufmaner. So that's not if Kaufmaner leaves, I still don't think that's that. I, I think Creighton might still try to find something there at the five that you know instead of just anointing Fred the starter, right? So. It doesn't depend on if he, you know, whatever he, if he doesn't think this is a good fit for his basketball, the basketball part of his life, then he might choose to go somewhere else. But if he thinks that, you know, I kind of am who I am as a player at this point and I can continue to develop under the staff and just kind of get better at the things that they, you know, want me to get better at, um, then I can see him just sticking around, you know. So it'll be interesting. Um, He's definitely one that, I thought there would be some movement on either one way or the other by now. So we'll see how that goes because I don't think he had the sophomore season he thought he was going to have. And it'll be interesting to see if he thinks that's 
a fit thing or if he thinks that's a, you know, something where he was a little bit banged up and he just couldn't get over that hurdle. Mm-hmm. Um, but that'll be the next, I think that'll be the next domino, whether he stays or goes, it'll be interesting to see from, from outside looking in because, um, there's definitely more there that is untapped yet. I agree. Matt, as always, we appreciate it. Hope you, uh, feel better. Uh, great stuff as always. And, uh, you know, the portal is busy. It's uh, spring sports season. There's a lot to uh, write about and talk about on White and Blue Review. So, as always, I thank you. Appreciate you guys. Have a good one. That's uh, Matt D. Marinas. Uh, again, the great folks over at White and Blue Review covering uh, Creighton Athletics. Uh, great stuff over there. And this is my new thing with the portal. So, I gave you the, the diatribe yesterday. I don't, I don't get all excited. And also, when a starter leaves, then you go, hmm? Because... People got a little, you know, people were a little worried about, you know, Diop transferring yesterday down in Lincoln. Not a starter. Didn't average a point a game. Timing when he came in. Remember, all portals are not created equal. But here's my new thing, Nick. As you reconstruct your roster, because Alabama, now that the Final Four is almost here, they're going to talk a lot about how Alabama redid their roster and, hey, they're in the Final Four. When you are looking to replace guys above replacement value, is a new thing. I'm done with war. Or going, I, or yeah, yeah. And above replacement value. Because that's the goal. Like if, uh, you know, you replace somebody in your business, you're looking to hire somebody better, correct? Yeah, right. Or yes. they, move, they move on. They, uh, indeed, they're walking out of your place, that commercial that airs all the time. <laughs> so above replacement value is you're looking to find somebody that is better than what you lost, either to graduation or to the portal. And that's how I think you have to look at this portal season. I think also April 12th is the day that we're going to start to hear a lot of chatter, either additions, um, maybe some subtractions, or in Kalkbrenner and Alexander's case, I'm going to the NBA, but I'm keeping my college eligibility, something like that. I think when we get through the, the portal combat dead period, which starts tomorrow and ends on the 11th or goes through the 11th, the 12th will be one of those days that things will start to pick up again. Uh, I, I, need a, I, I need a T-shirt yeah. of Portal Combat, by hey, the way. I would love Nate Oates to be in Glendale and wear a T-shirt that says <laughs> Portal Combat. I won on the back. <laughs> um, if 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 we have a calming influence when it comes to portaling, you, my friend, you get you get all of the money. You get all of the credit for that because it, no, that that's it, it. Actually, is a very rational way of looking at it. If in a knee-jerk reaction society that we're in, I, I'm guilty of it all the time. And especially when there are certain names that you see that go into the porter. Jope yesterday didn't, you're right, Jope yesterday didn't do a lot for me. I was, oh my God, it's another one leaving the door. What's going on? But there are there, there are going to be some guys that rattle you. I, I think last year when you and I were both talking to Joel Lorenzi and he mentioned them hard. Yeah, we both looked at each other and thought, that was, "That's a starter." Yeah, they lost and we and, last year, and we stopped f- for a moment there. And I think you even said, "Wait, what?" And yeah, he tried and to slip, he tried to he tried to give me the okie okie dokie and just slip that one. Oh he no did. no, he hey, I don't, the lead. I don't let people go five hole on me. <laughs> he, he tried he tried and good on you for that. But that was that's one where I and I understand it. A lot of people were freaking out. And you see the value of him. But if if there is a lesson to be learned, and I think now we've seen a lot of examples throughout college basketball, when something like that happens, when, when a core member of your starting lineup leaves, you have to look at it in two different ways. One, you know, what's going on there? If, if they're not completely sold on the system, if they were somehow forced to come back, are you getting the most out of them? Are you getting their very best performances night in and night out? And second, what you mentioned there, I think is extremely important. You've now seen enough where you can be patient. There are so many examples and there are so many options out there in the transfer portal, almost too many options out there in the portal that this is where you have to as hard as it might be, have to trust your coaching staff in identifying the type of guy that not only can come in and fill a void, but as you point out, I love this, the value above replacement, that that value of replacement that you can gain from somebody. Maybe he doesn't look the same. Maybe he doesn't have the same type of certain elements to his game, but what he brings 
can actually upgrade the position too and can can work with the other members that you have coming back. In basketball especially, I think that's that's a great way of looking at it because that can it, it forces you to be patient through this whole process. It forces you to say, all right, well, I do trust the coaching staff and being able to identify it because you do have a lot of options out there. The Stephen Ashworth example, I think, is a really good one because he's not Ryan Nemhard. There, there, there are things about Stephen Ashworth's game, and you knew when they identified him, okay, you're going to miss an, a certain element of Ryan Nemhard, but he did also bring another element to the long-range shooting, to the overall facilitation, and once he got his feet wet in Big East play, you saw the value there. There, there are a lot of examples of that. That's not to say Stephen Ashworth is a better player than Ryan Nemhard, but it worked out okay for Creighton. Yep. All right, there's Nick. I'm Gary. Jimmy is here as uh, well. Jack Mitchell, our uh, our colleague down at uh, KLIN in Lincoln, uh, got his hands on one of the breakfast runs. Review? Oh, breakdown? I don't know. It's Jack. Well, I would expect there's a I, breakdown. You know what? Eh, it just, I, I don't think, uh, no, I, I, was, I was fired up okay. and now I'm seeing pictures and. First picture of Jack's. Eh. Why not hash browns? Second one. Why not hash browns? I'm with you. Why not hash browns and why not breakfast sausage as opposed to ham? Breakfast springs? Yeah, I, I think we need to work on this in the Runza Lab down yeah. there on uh, you know, in, in Lincoln. Do they need I a love the idea. I absolutely am 100% on board with the idea. I love the idea. I've, I've wanted this for years. Part-time job. I'll take it. What time does a, a Runza usually open? 11? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 10.30. So they'd have to expand their hours. Yeah. Uh, Taco no. Bell did. Yeah. I don't know. But <laughs> you have to have more than just the, the breakfast Runza. That's true. Oh, you're true. If you're going to open up for breakfast hours and you only have one option, why not? A, why not a long john stuffed with cabbage and onions like you have in Runza? <laughs> Call it a Runza with some Bavarian cream. Well, the morning Runza. <laughs> it's going to give you the morning Runza. <laughs> <laughs> Mornings with Charlotte Hanley and Jimmy on sixteen twenty the zone. Hey, if you have uh, if you have a running problem, um. And you used to like running. Yeah, I'm not going there. If you used to like running and all of a sudden you're very disinterested in getting out and running and you're wondering, okay, what's wrong with me? You know what? You, you need to look into it. Us men, as we get a little bit older, we get into our 50s and, and even younger. Things aren't the same. All right. We've lost interest in our spouse. We don't have the same energy to keep up with the kids. And you know what is happening is men are changing their lives courtesy of mentality. Great to hear from so many of you that have heard me talk about mentality now for a while. And you have said, you know what? I may have low T. I'll let mentality check it out. And their staff, they're polite, they're professional, and they've helped many men in this community get back to the energy and confidence that they've needed for a long time. So if you possibly have all of these symptoms, you know what? And it doesn't matter what age you are. Low testosterone can be an issue with any guy. And even if you've tried testosterone before, not everyone understands the blood chemistry in men's bodies like mentality. They can help. Just schedule an appointment. You'll get a physical. They'll sit down with you, a full consultation, complete blood panel, the results. They'll go through what they can do for you if it is low T. And as they work with most insurance companies, they're board certified physicians, diagnose, and they take care of you and they get you back on the path to enjoying life and being you. Men, we deserve it. You deserve it to take care of yourself and find out if low T is an issue and how to overcome it. Go to the website right now, lowtusa.com. It is mentality, lowtusa.com. Gary Sharp, Nick Hanley, and Jimmy Chavez. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. Weekdays 6 to 10. On 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com. Your Omaha area forecast from a Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV Newswatch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Planning on a cool and windy Wednesday. There'll be some clouds around early, then giving way to tons of sunshine. Northwest winds, though, will be gusting around 40 miles per hour throughout the day with highs in the low 50s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV Newswatch 7. 1620 The Zone. Traffic. 
from the Pyramid Roofing Time Saving Traffic Center. The I-480 southbound off-ramp to I-80 westbound is still closed due to an earlier accident. This has stop-and-go traffic backed up to US-75 North Freeway. As a result, an alternate route L Street westbound heavy stop-and-go traffic between 36th and 42nd. Another accident reported I-680 southbound just before the Dodge exit. This has the right lane blocked and has stop-and-go traffic back to Maple. Please stay safe and wear that seatbelt. I'm Peter Krenzer. This time-saving traffic was brought to you by Romeo's Mexican Food and Pizza. Not your typical restaurant. Not your typical place. Romeo's. Not your typical restaurant. For your not your typical taste. Romeo's. Romeo's Mexican Food and Pizza. Not your typical restaurant. When I heard the words, you have breast cancer, I said, I have no idea what I'm going to do. My OBGYN called me and said, I know exactly what we're going to do, which led me to Nebraska Cancer Specialist. From day one, I felt that I was at the right place. There were some pretty rough times, but together we are stronger and they are there for you. You do not feel that you are alone. NebraskaCancer.com if you're looking to upgrade your kitchen or bathroom or create a functional storage solution for your closets, pantry, or garage, make Level Countertops, Cabinets, and Flooring your first choice to take your space to the next level. Level is a unique company that can design, build, and install custom cabinetry, fabricate and install all countertop surfaces, and supply and install floor finishes and tile. Stop into the showroom at 192nd and West Mabel today or visit levelomaha.com. That's levelomaha.com. It's Champions Replacement Window Season, and we're celebrating with Buy Two Windows Get Two Free. If your windows are drafty, difficult to operate, or costing you money on your energy bill, it's time to replace them. Champion Windows is here to help. Champion builds our own windows right here in the USA. We make the process easy. We help you choose the best design options for your home. We then build your project in our very own factory. Our install team manages your project every step of the way, and it's all backed by our lifetime guarantee. Turn your house into your dream home with more livable space in a new Champion sunroom or enhance your curb appeal with new siding. Now 30% off. Don't wait. This sale won't last long. Buy two windows, get two free and 30% off sunrooms and siding. Call 877-GO-CHAMPION or visit championsavenow.com to schedule a free in-home estimate today. All discounts apply to our regular prices. Select style supply. Minimum purchase required. Cannot be combined with other advertised offers. See store or website for details. Champion. Host is roasting every morning. Host is roasting every day. Put your coffee department in good hands with Host Coffee Service, providing direct delivery and loaned coffee equipment with service programs. If you're ready to change to a better coffee provider, it's time for Host Coffee. Omaha's best coffee since 1972. Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is available right at your fingertips in Iowa. The Circus Sports Iowa app is sports betting the way it should be. Bet anywhere in Iowa and experience high betting limits, tight money line splits, and exceptional customer service. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircusSports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. Omaha Maverick Baseball is coming off a series victory over 2023 College World Series qualifier Oral Roberts. And the Mavs are ready to take on crosstown rival Creighton on Tuesday, April 9th at Tal Anderson Field. Don't miss this classic matchup. Plus, it's $2 Tuesdays when all Pepsi products and Bush Light cans are $2 when the gates open until the third inning. Get your tickets for this game and all baseball and softball games by calling 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash ticks. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Handy. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. Hey, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about uh, the, uh, the basketball uniforms, uh, whether it be back in the day of the Fab Five or most recently, well, 15 years ago, were the baggy shorts, the baggy uniforms. Uh, this was brought to my attention with DJ Burns getting ready to make an appearance in the uh, Final Four. Uh, after he had a long line, uh, what was he at, an Applebee's in Raleigh yesterday? Yes. Sign autographs? Yeah. Man, there are, people love them some Applebee's. 
like like Applebee's is in like Applebee's got a famous song. A lot of people go to Applebee's. A lot of people go there on dates. There's a lot of NIL deals with Applebee's. That's true. Am I missing something with Applebee's? Because I'm a Chili's guy. I don't cheat. I'm a Chili's guy over in Applebee's. What's, what a, song's baby, better to you? The Baby Back Ribs Chili song or the uh, country song where they mention at Applebee's? Oh, because I want, baby back ribs. Because I want to choke myself listening to that song, which, you know, what you when it was hot, it was on all the time. Every singer. Yeah. No, I'm I'm Chili's over Applebee's, but Applebee's loves themselves some uh athletes. So they had this long line outside of the Applebee's in Raleigh last night to get DJ Burns autograph. And man, big fella going to get some bag. He's he's promoting doing your taxes on April 15th on I TikTok am. yesterday. And I'm like, that guy's a hey, genius. Good on you. Yeah. Um, and he was at Applebee's signing autographs last night. But this was brought to my attention. Can you imagine if DJ Burns was playing back in the late 80s when they had the unitard uniforms. <laughs> Remember those? Oh, that'd be that wouldn't be flattering. <laughs> what do you think the conversations were like if you were playing basketball in the late 80s and they introduced the unitard uniform? <laughs> Not shorts and a jersey, but the whole thing. I mean, the big fellow would be wearing that, and we would be scarred for life. Yeah, there are things that you would not be able to unsee in that. I, I, I do think that was like Andre, it was like Andre the Giant. Yeah, remember when he used to wear his uh, his leotard to wrestle or Finch but, and Wildcats? Yeah, exactly. No, they, they had to put they had to put uh, masking tape around Finch. They had the, the sides. <laughs> remember, it was a front and a back, and then you had to duct tape it around him. <laughs> because they couldn't have the sides, otherwise it was going to protrude. I, I feel like, have you ever, can you recall seeing a robust gentleman in that era of uniform? You know, like a 275-pounder, DJ Chubby, Burns type guy in, a, in that type of uniform. It didn't really exist. You'd have to have a specially made uniform. Yeah. Yeah, that's, you know, probably, I'm just going to be honest here. That's probably one of the reasons why I never wrestled. Uh, among other reasons, I just couldn't hack it. Uh, shout out to the people that wrestle and what it takes to be a wrestler. But I just, I wouldn't look good in the, in the whole uh, wrestling uh, singlet. Oh, I wouldn't have either. But that's what, that's what kind of those basketball uniforms were in yeah. the late 80s. So you'd be putting my big man into that uniform to play basketball. <laughs> It'd be a little cumbersome. Can you imagine Zach Eady? <laughs> In the unitard <laughs> uniform, the rest of my uniform, <laughs> just 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 right, big men in general, like over seven feet tall, or six nine six ten guys that are ranging at between two eighty and three hundred pounds. I don't think they could have played. Either that, or they would have, they would have had to. Yeah, there would have to be a certain uniform line that they would have had to make an exception for those guys. Are you sure yeah. you're talking about the late eighties, though, man? I, I, are, isn't this more of like the seventies? No, it was uh, it was like in the late eighties. Yeah, they, the late they, 80s? The unitard uniform got introduced. Okay, then they decided to separate them. Same huh. material. They actually, they actually came to their senses. Yeah, same material, but they separated. You had a jersey and you had shorts. I mean, I want some looseness. I don't want some tightness. When you can uh, get the, the the actual shorts, and again, these were, I mean, these were thigh showers. But remember yeah. the ones that actually had belts. They had belts built in. Yeah, yeah I also remember, back in the fifties. I also remember when they played six on six girls high school basketball in Iowa too. In so. Iowa, yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, but that's what March is about is to deliver stars like DJ Burns, where we don't know much about him. And then all of a sudden we go, whoa. Yeah. Because there is such a disconnect in college basketball between watching the regular season and the phenomenon that is March Madness. Mm -hmm. It just oh, I just agree. look at the ratings. Look, look, look at the ratings in a regular season compared to like the 15 million that watched NC State Duke. Yeah. That, that, that gap is so huge. And the attention and the product being better is so much different. So if you're telling me I only pay attention to the NCAA tournament championship week through March Madness, and you're looking at me and I'm like, well, for my job and because I want to, I pay attention starting in November, I get you. Because they're, I mean, we don't have that gap. We don't have that gap in college football no, from no. the regular season to the postseason of, you know, hey, people just stop by during bowl season. Oh, we take it all in. But boy, in college basketball, it seems like that's growing even more. And I look at the ratings and I'm thinking the ratings and the product. I'm like, gosh, 
College basketball has something great in March Madness, but boy, do they have a regular season problem when it comes to attention. Seemed to be better back in the day. Um, regular season, that is. It was must watch. Well, okay, so so different sport, but is is college basketball's regular season impacted by the NFL as well? Yes, it is. It, absolutely, it is. It's impacted by college football too. With you just, I've had this conversation to a lesser degree when we're talking about these sports about college hockey. And Gary, you and I were talking about this off the air when it comes to their scheduling. You you just get into a certain time of the year where that sport is on people's mind, and that sport it's it you're going to be able to to fully devote time to it. I, I think the NFL, I think college football, obviously that ends earlier, but the NFL, as long as they have meaningful games being played and you've got playoffs, then you've got the Super Bowl, everything, but especially college basketball has taken a backseat to it. You, you might casually observe it if you're someone who is a, a casual college basketball fan, you might have an idea, maybe especially if you have a team that you root for. But as far as all of the happenings around that conference or around your team, you're not you're not really getting into that until February, in my opinion. And I, and I don't know if that's ever I don't know if that's ever changed. I don't I, I don't know if that's all of a sudden a new revelation. I think that's how it's always been. I think it is an NFL. I think it's more more than anything a football problem. The the beast that is the uh, NFL. Uh, Kelly Ann chimes in on the uh, text line. She said, uh, "Good morning. I think our new quarterback is chubby." Oh, geez. <laughs> so Dylan Riola has a dad bod because his, so Patrick Mahomes. his, yes, hmm, exactly. It, it is, it, it, guys, guys, and, and, and on a side note, uh, Tony Fanotti was in Lincoln yesterday. His head is not shrunk. That is a large human being, <laughs> a gigantic human being that I don't think got enough credit for how good he was when he was here. He just is a large man, and he was on campus yesterday with his football team from Hawaii. Uh, so he took a picture with Riola uh, and uh, Unk. Um, I think that Patrick Mahomes' kid plays football at Nebraska. <laughs> the illegitimate kid. There's a lot of similarities there. Night now, of passion and love. Now, the same track now, now, if you're doing the age, it really is a remarkable feat by Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> It would be essentially what a father at eight or nine years old. Well, oh, consider this does that surprise you? I mean, my my God, is there anything that is not Pro Bowl worthy on that body? <laughs> um, why, he's a freshman. So, why do we got to? Why do we, we all got to be body shaming him all okay, of a sudden? So, so this is not. She's not. She's not the no, first person that has brought no, that up. I've heard. The, I heard he this got, yesterday. It was a. It was trending. But he he has kind of always had that. I mean, he's got. So he's got a. He's got a. Dad bod and a college age kid. Can he throw? Yeah. What is his? Does his arm look like a dad bod? He can sling it. Okay. Boom. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's not going to be running. Okay. You're not going to be running the option with Dylan Riola. Right. Um. But you know, I mean, it's he. She won't be the first, and you know, she's not the first. She won't be the last. People will bring it up like when they see him, and they go, "Man, that quarterback's not in shape." Well, he just, I think he has a weird body. It, it is kind of, yeah. But you're, you're, the, the comparison to Patrick Mahomes, and then we all got to see it after the Super Bowl when he was shirtless. Yeah. Um, now, I don't think Dylan is as pigeon toe as Patrick Mahomes is. I don't think he has that. Uh, but, no, no, but he does imitate it sometimes. Yeah, a little bit. And it's worth. Not to be too descriptive because it's not something I'm watching, but it's noticeable. Is you you have like the butt out when you're walking, like the butts out, and so that's what that's always a true sign of like pigeon toe. Is your the way you walk? It kind of forces you to to stick your old caboose out a little bit. Hashtag I guess business. there is a little bit of that with uh, with old Dylan, but I, come on, man. And I'm not saying you are. This was or even Kellyanne. This was a conversation. It was trending a lot yesterday. In the last couple of days of, of his body, you know, Corey Campbell will take good care of him. No matter what he looks like, he'll be in good. He'll be in good being able to throw the ball at a seventy percent clip shape. That's all you need. Whatever that shape looks like, sign me up. I'm I'm good with that. 
Lenny Dawson smoked lung darts and drank Fresca in the yeah. locker room. Well, well, let me ask you this: Would you would you rather have your quarterback like this this model of peak physique, yet is completing fifty percent of his passes and throwing a touchdown to two picks, or would you like a guy that's maybe a little bit more soft? Maybe he's uh, and not soft mentally, but you know the, the, the body's a little more soft. It's I, I'm going to be I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm I'm to be weak here. Does he help Nebraska win football games? Yes. He can look like me. Yeah. If he helps Nebraska <laughs> win football games, Cold that's all I care hero. about. Okay. Uh, hey, all I know is Jared Lorenzen could throw the ball. He looks yeah. like us. Uh, follow up here. Uh, Dylan Riola, this could be a poll question. Is he the Jabba Chamberlain of football? There we go. <laughs> oh. Uh, that's that's a good comparison. Yes. Man, it's the majors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, he, and, and to your, your question just a moment ago. Did he help Nebraska win? Oh, yeah. Oh, he helped him win at a high clip. It's going to be a great year. We're, we're body shaming the quarterback. I know. we got to stop this. And their, fan, and, and their fan base are going to be just livid. Yeah. They're already like, they saw videos shared last week, and they're like, you guys are, and they're like, no, man, you don't realize how rough it's been around here. <laughs> People are going to hate us by the time we get to the, uh, well, heck, by May 1, after <laughs> the spring game. All right, 851. When we come back, uh, so back to the transfer portal involving uh, Nebraska. Um, With guys that are out of the transfer portal that are still on Nebraska's roster, who will be the most important player in the core to move forward with Nebraska basketball? Kind of interesting question. Uh, That's why I asked it. And uh, I I may have an answer that will be different from what you're thinking. We'll get into that because the portal is active. Uh, Nebraska has put six into the portal. None of them starters. When the starter goes in, I go, hmm? Right now, fringe guys. Mm-hmm. Except for Lawrence, Wiltshire makes sense. The one that went in yesterday, I wonder if his timing to get to campus was different if there would have been a different result. Remember, he was late getting to campus. So things got sped up, and then the season started. Uh, all of that and much more to come. Brandon Vogel stops by in about an hour on 1620 The Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com with Gary Sharp and Nick Hanley. For the Jays, the Huskers, and even you Jayskers, we are 1620 The The Zone. Zone. Is your concrete cracked or uneven? Hey everyone, Coach Greg McDermott here to explain why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. Many people think they need to replace broken concrete, but repairing it provides durable protection and comes at a fraction of the cost. Everlevel provides permanent repair solutions to fix your concrete and protect it against future damage. And it all comes with a long-term transferable warranty. They offer free inspections to walk you through the entire process. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today. Trees, are they all the same? Not at Lanahaw. Grown from a quality seed source, handcrafted in our local farms for generations, and acclimated to our tough Midwestern climate, Lana Haw's trees are different. Simply put, they're better. Much like our trees, we take great pride in being homegrown. Visit our garden center to find your next tree today. Rooted in quality, unmatched value, Lana Haw Nurseries, 192nd and Center. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is available right at your fingertips in Iowa. The Circus Sports Iowa app is sports betting the way it should be. Bet anywhere in Iowa and experience high betting limits, tight money line splits, and exceptional customer service. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircusSports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees, the source, by your mom's house. We're going abroad for the first time in years to Spain. But we don't speak Spanish. So we started using Babbel. And started learning Spanish fast. With Babbel, you can start having conversations in another language in just three weeks. Babbel's conversational method teaches you real-life words and phrases. And with Babbel's interactive bite-sized lessons, you'll remember what you learned. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿De dónde eres? ¿De dónde eres? When you learn a language, you want to actually use it. Babbel is designed with that goal in mind. In just three weeks, we're starting to have conversations in Spanish. Estoy muy emocionado para ir a España contigo. 
Aww, he just said, I'm very excited to go to Spain with you. Nos vamos a divertir mucho. And that means we're going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> sí. Gracias, Babel. Babel, language for life. Celebrating 10 million subscriptions sold. Now try Babel for free at Babel.com. Just go to Babel.com and start learning a new language today. That's Babbel.com, B-A-B-B-E-L.com. What moves you? Whether it's running a race or playing with your grandkids, orthopedic specialists at CHI Health are dedicated to helping you keep life moving. We offer the latest surgical and non-surgical treatments, so you have options for painful shoulders, knees, hips, and every joint in between. Don't let joint pain put life on pause. Count on our team of orthopedic specialists to begin your journey back to what moves you today. Certified Transmission built its reputation on the job done right. It means hard work, honesty, and integrity. And together, we ensure our customers leave satisfied and worry-free. Certified Transmission, the job done right at the right price. Car repair is car repair. Most places you go can change your oil or fix your brakes. The difference is the experience you'll get at Omaha Car Care. We're part of the community. We were born here, and we believe that our relationship with you should be built to last. We're going to consult you, not sell you. We're going to give you a free loaner car. We're going to treat you like a valued friend that we want to continue to see in the years to come. I'm Rick Betker, owner of Omaha Car Care, and we'll be along for the ride. 1620 The Zone at 1620thezone.com. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hammond on 1620 The Zone. Hey, so watch the uh, Brewers uh, home opener yesterday. Yeah, Uke. Yeah, Bob Uecker back in the booth, 54th year 90. at the age of 90. Yeah. The age of 90. And sounded good. Sounded really good. He's only doing the home games. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. As long as his health allows. So. Yeah. Um, I think but he does the, one, maybe one week in, in Arizona for spring training. That's about it, too. Yeah. Uh, the pipes sound uh, good. Um, also, uh, Mookie Betts scored his 14th run last night, which is more than the Mets, White Sox, and Minnesota have. So there you go. <clears throat> Don't want to rub that in. There's some bad teams in baseball this yes. year, not just the A's. The Colorado Rockies literally are terrible. Yeah, I mean, I, I that's an interleague I series to, we need. I'm supposed to say that the Rockies may like challenge the Dodgers, and that looks good for the Cubs. You know, bludging them yesterday, twelve to two. Rockies are a bad team, hmm. worst start ever that they've had at the uh, Rock Pile. And I don't see like light at the end of the tunnel. And I feel for Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant looks nothing like he looked in Chicago. Uh, the days of warm it up, Chris, coming up to the plate at Wrigley Field. Memories, memories. Yeah, you remember that ground ball? Stop. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, you know, we're all uh, we're all portaling, and it is a it's college basketball thing. One in three players are in the portal. One in three players. So it's not a Nebraska problem. It is a a thing in basketball where people are getting bad advice or coaches change or they have one more year to use or whatever their reasons are. But as Nebraska has six in, and I'm trying to be Kevin Bacon here. I'm trying to, you know, people that are panicking, calm down. But this is how the portal works. The portal giveth and the portal taketh away. And so far in Nebraska's case, they haven't taken a starter away. Williams, Mass, Gary, all around, all intending to come back. Now you got some holes to fill because you lost your one of your best three point shooters and you lost Alex, so you, you already knew you had to replace that. Um, but isn't it interesting in the portal world where you don't know who's coming or going? So from year to year, you got to relearn part of your roster. Where in women's basketball, the NIL is good that it is retaining players, and so they're sticking around maybe another year, so the stories can develop and you 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 become more attracted to the name on the back of the jersey. Can college basketball live where you're just attracted to the front of the jersey and it doesn't matter what their name says on the back? Because rosters are like that 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 revolving door and you have to relearn them every year. Sometimes it's tough to cover. Sometimes it's tough to root for. But can you root for the front instead of the back of the jersey? 
I think certain places can. It's tough. It's I, I I'll be the first to raise my hand and say it's it's different. It it changes the way that you get passionate about a team because you're right. You're 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 solely focused now on that program and whether you're a Nebraska fan where I think Nebraska is a little different. I, I think you can get behind just the name on the front because that's just what you've known to do, but it does help. I, if, if you're say like Jimmy, if, if you're a Kansas fan, if you're a Duke fan, if you're a North Carolina fan, you're going to love yourself some Zeke Mayo at Kansas. Yeah. Yep. You're, Once that, you know, posted that picture. That was a done deal. You're a passionate fan base. But I think a lot of that passion is you feel you want to have that connection with a player and you're not having that connection when they're only there a year or two. And you're excited about the future when you get a five star guy in, but he doesn't play maybe the amount of minutes or have the say the type of role you thought he'd have right out of the gate that he's gone. It's really different to to find the same type, I think, passion for those teams when you have that guy here one day, gone the next at the rate that you just described there, one out of three. That is a high, high rate. So there is a high hit rate for Fred in the portal. So that's why right now, wait and see. And and again, Nebraska's busy. All right. You go from, oh my gosh, Kata could have, he wasn't going to be in your core rotation. Then you go, Malik Ewan, number one junior college player, rim protector. Oh my God. Love that guy. Nebraska's in a good spot with him. William Kyle. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Uh, oh Andrew Morgan, North Carolina. Whoa, whoa, this is great. I love this. This is free agency. Kata, Wiltshire, Lawrence. Who, who's the other guy? I, I don't even know him. Don't even know if he played. You're talking to me that they were talking to Connor Hickman. Oh, that's the next Tomonaga. He just isn't from Japan. So that's kind of how the portal works. Here's here's the thing that I worry about with Fred. And, and maybe this isn't a worry and he can overcome this. Again, he's had a good hit rate in the portal. Just like Mac. Mac every year has had like a not just a hit where it's a little single from Joe Maurer that on the Metrodome turf squirts through the middle of the infield. Um, I hate to do that to Joe, but that's the truth. Love me some Joe Maurer. I'm going to be in Cooperstown, but um, it's like Mac has hit like a one off the wall. And sometimes he's gone over the wall with a Shireman. Like one guy every year has been a a, a hit hit. Um, But Fred has done a good job of getting a hit rate with transfers. And Tobinaga essentially was a transfer from a junior college. Here's two things that I that I I wonder if Fred will ever ever do different, because while the core three that are here off of last year's NCAA team will stay, I almost think for the next step with Nebraska basketball, Nick Janowski is the most important guy, because he's a high school guy. Fred has always been enamored with taking care of the top six of the roster. And then just kind of letting the bottom six go, and we can replace those guys every year. He hasn't had that guy at Nebraska yet, where is a three year high school guy that they've developed and has been a contributor year in and year out. And in the day and age of where high school kids go to school, and if they're not playing like 15 to 20 minutes right away, they're probably jumping in the portal. Yep. I think Nick Janowski is vitally important. For the next step for Nebraska basketball, latch onto a high school kid that you like that I like, and then he's here for a while. He plays mm-hmm. and he develops, and you've got a high school guy, and maybe it leads to another high school yep. guy to supplement with your transfers that you're getting because you're playing the game in college basketball. In the in the ideal situation, it would be just that. Be able to have the freshman come in, in this case, a, a shooting guard like Janowski come in. You contribute right away. So he not only gets the taste early on, but he's also seeing that this is going to be his spot for years to come. You're happy with the surroundings, too. You're happy with the coaching staff, but you're also happy with the situation when it comes to name, image, likeness and everything that they have to offer. That's my hope is that it would lead to a situation where you're looking at your starting five, that three of those starters are traditional recruits. Three of those starters are guys that you brought up and you developed to where maybe you're interchanging the other two every couple of years via the transfer portal. And you're able to even build some depth via the transfer portal and have some options when it comes to that. But being able to have two, two you can get by with, three would be would be ideal. I know that's probably not the reality in college basketball right now, but being able to have at least on a given year, the five starters 
two to three of those guys being the freshmen that come in that impact right away and you're able to retain them. To me, that I think would be that would be the situation I'd like to see at the very least too. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I'm can, I don't think Fred's ever going to develop a big man. He can go into the portal and get a big man, Mm -hmm. but I, I think the next step for Nebraska basketball is your high school evaluation and getting a guy a year where you hit on a high school guy that comes in and he's here for a couple of years and he plays. Instead of he's here for one year, it's not a fit. He was never going to play, and he's in the portal, and you replace him with a portal guy. Yep. That's why I think Janowski is is the most important addition for Nebraska basketball moving forward. It doesn't mean, and I and I say this, it doesn't mean like he's going to be a guy that's going to be a, a fifteen point a game right. guy, and Nebraska's back in the NCAA tournament. I'm talking about the the makeup of your roster, where you have a a good high school player. He's here for a while, and he plays quality minutes because. As a high school player, if you're not playing right away and they don't have a plan for you, right? maybe you redshirted because you got to get your body right, what, why are you sticking around? Yeah. Because somebody always wants you. Like like, like uh, M. Bigley just asked on the stream, Charlie Easley. Charlie Easley you know, wanted to play at Nebraska, but wanted to play more than he was ever going to play at Nebraska. Yeah, he got to play a lot his first year here. And he was a contributor. That above replacement value they kind of did that with sam hoiberg so sam you know you trade charlie easily to brookings and sam hoiberg comes from the same high school charlie went to the summer league and was ideal for the summer league sometimes guys have to move down to fit their fit their entire skill level and their wants of playing a lot you and you and you accept that as long as you, you go you go back to the, the thing you brought up I, it, to me is the most important thing and that is having a plan because in order to, you don't want to force a start a starting role for anybody that you feel hey it's not there yet but damn if we don't get him heavily involved right now we're afraid he's going to walk you can't coach like that you can't build a roster like that if the guy's not ready he's not ready but how are you putting out the plan of maybe you're not ready right now to be a starter right out of the gate but you're going to get some minutes you're going to get some involvement but here's how we're going to get you ready too I yeah, don't know how much that's communicated. Yeah, there's the other thing that, and I, again, this is another one that I don't think, I think I think Fred, this is just his thing. And he's not alone, is you pay attention to the top half of your roster and not so much at the bottom of your roster because you're like, if I take care of my top six guys, I can always replace the bottom six guys mm-hmm. because the portal is always open. It's like shopping at Walmart when before they cut back on their hours. All right, it's always open. You can always walk in, grab the shopping cart, and go around the store and pick out items you want. That's how I treat Coles. You treat Coles that way? Yeah, yeah. I go in, maybe I needed a pair of socks. I walk out like, oh, you know what? I, I uh, That's a better deal. I'll come out with that too. So. See, my, my, mine, mine is Target. I can't go to Target for one thing. No, Yeah, that's also a problem. Uh, one more hour to go. Brandon Vogel is going to join us uh, a little bit uh, later. We'll get his thoughts on uh, week two of spring football, maybe some portaling. And uh, college basketball in uh, general, which this weekend of the semifinal games, the best game in Cleveland, Iowa and UConn. Uh, that's all to come. Last hour, mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. More with Gary and Nick after this on 1620 The Zone. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. 1620 The Zone. Traffic. From the Pyramid Roofing Time Saving Traffic Center. The I 480 southbound off ramp to I 80 westbound closed due to an earlier accident, stop and go traffic back to Martha Street. Multiple accidents, I 680 southbound one at the Maple Street exit. This has the right lanes blocked, only the far left lane is currently open. Another I 680 southbound accident at Blondo. This has traffic backed up to Maple. And some heavy stop and go traffic, L Street westbound currently between 36th and 42nd. Please be safe and wear that seatbelt. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. Day. I'm Peter Krenzer. This time-saving traffic is brought to you by Lanaha Nurseries. It's spring. Now is the best time to shop at Lanaha for all things garden or landscape. Our garden center is filled with the largest selection of homegrown plants, flowers, trees, and more. The area's best mulch and soil available for delivery and pickup. Rooted in quality, unmatched value. Lanaha Nurseries, 192nd and Center.
Sometimes life throws you a curveball and you need a solution fast. A solution to help you make payroll, to save your house, to keep growing, or fund a startup, to fix a roof or other major repair. Sauls is your fast, local, confidential solution. Get the cash you need today with Sauls. When it comes to protecting your home, Jay Stennett Contracting takes pride in ensuring every detail is handled. Roofing, siding, gutters. When it comes to the exterior of your home, Jay Stennett Contracting has you covered. Have you noticed stains on your ceiling this winter? With storm season around the corner and the damage it can bring, let Jay Stennett Contracting ensure that your roof is durable and holds up against the weather this spring and summer. When you need an honest assessment, Jay Stennett Contracting has you covered. JSCRestoration.com Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply hi this is Doug Nodgaard with Equitable Bank great service never goes out of style when the digital age dawned many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person boy were they wrong how many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two not at Equitable not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring it's answered by a human being that's because Equitable Bank values its customers Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. Member FDIC. Tickets for less. Best seats. Best prices. No service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. 1620 the email you'll be the first to know all the exciting content that's happening on 1620 the zone including sports news contests promotions and more sign up today at 1620 the zone.com hey why can't uh we turn off caitlin clark uh that would be a patrick mccaffrey question connor get it right it's connor Connor, sorry who am i thinking of? i mean sometimes you're dating twins and you get them confused but they're not. They're not, <laughs> not even twins. They are brothers. They are twins <laughs> so you what do you guys you know? Guys, ever had that happen? Uh no, I've never dated twins. I mean, I didn't date them. I mean, that's the dream, though, right? That is the dream. It's the dream. There yeah. are there are a lot of lot of things that people would con- consider to be the American dream or just the dream. Uh, that falls into that category, yes. Miller Lite told us in the late '90s. But uh, is it would the would would it be able to if you fulfilled the dream? Would it play out the way that you hoped it would? I think it would be very confusing. Uh, speak to me, Goose. <laughs> How do you think that works? Yeah, I think it would be very very confusing. I think there would be certain things that you like about one, maybe not as much about the other. But if they were identical. It would be very tough. When, what happens when you get them confused? Maybe they let the first time pass when you do get them confused, but after a while, they get very, very upset with that. And then all of a sudden, the other one, she, you know, they, they, they share the same brain. So if one of them is turned off with you, the other one probably is turned off with you too. I, there's a lot of things that could go very wrong. So it's one of those beware what you wish for type situations. Okay. You'd there have you a go. fun Friday night though. There's a little advice from, uh, from uh, Nick. But we can't we can't turn her off. Like there's the other part of um, her performance, and and it's very rare. You know, we had Zion, who was the best player in college basketball, going to be the number one pick, and so we were drawn to him. And she's going to be the number one pick in the WNBA draft. I really hope the Indiana Fever trade their number one pick in 2025 to get Angel Reese, to have Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese and yeah. Leah Boston all on the same team. Now, what wouldn't that team. be fun? I'll adopt them. Um, but there's the other part of the Caitlin Clark and the why I say can't, we can't turn her off. So so as great as she is and what she has done 
adding to where women's basketball is. She she's not Jordan. Jordan revolutionized the sport because he took it out of the country and it developed over, you know, overseas. But she has added to the next level of where women's basketball is going. But why I say why we can't turn her off? Remember, remember how we got upset at Mahomes and Kelsey because they were on the Chiefs and they were winning, but yet we watched and then they were on every single commercial? Yeah. Do you guys realize that almost every single commercial Monday night on ESPN was Caitlin Clark? Yeah. Yes. It actually but, reminded but, me. But nobody said, oh, I'm now tired of her. I not yet. So why get your bag? Why is I, she different? Uh, because I, I think that the, the commercial appeal again, that part of it, because I think that is a big part of it. You get the fatigue of those players. That's still kind of new, isn't it? I mean, she was, she was doing some rollouts with state farm that e e eased into that one. Then all of a sudden the Gatorade part of it, I don't know what the Wi-Fi one she was on or the home internet oh, speed Xfinity. Is it was it Xfinity? Okay, Xfinity. Yeah. So that was the the most recent one. Now you're starting to run all of those together. So she's built up that that commercial inventory, and so now it's coming at you in waves. Where it wasn't necessarily doing that in January. If we had another month or two of this, where you've got the four or five Caitlin Clark commercials, and they're in just about every commercial block, I guarantee you we would be having a similar conversation or the feeling would be very similar to the way it is with Mahomes and Kelsey and anybody that we've just got fatigue over because they are always on our TV screen. She's an absolute force on the floor and off the floor mm -hmm. as a marketing tool. 12.3 million, 12.3 million Monday night watched two stars, two head coaches who make you feel something. And then the ball. I mean, and then also it opens the door to go, ah, Kate Martin, mm -hmm. Johnson. Oh, oh yeah. my, my gosh. The basketball is really, really good. Um, it, she, she's, she's an absolute force. 12.3 million. Keep saying that about a women's college basketball game. 12.3 million and at peak 16. And here's even more impressive. In the demo of men, 18 to 49, they did exceptionally well. They did better than any of the big four networks and their primetime programming on Monday night. That's men 18 through 49. Mm -hmm. that, that's she. Uh, we, we've, we've rarely seen this in uh, sports in the Caitlin Clark effect. Yes, it helps that she's the best player in the sport, but she is a marketing tool that we can't quit. And usually by this time, we're tired of it. And we're like, oh, I've had too much. And, and maybe you are. I just sense that people want more and they're going to get it on uh, Friday night. All right. Uh, here is uh, Gary on the uh, 42 Degree Source uh, hotline. Great first name. Great guy. Great call. Hello. Thanks, Mr. Gary. <laughs> Since you're the UNO expert, do uh -oh. you see Mr. Fiddler wearing a Creighton uniform <laughs> next year? And if you do, is it on the side of where 23 used to play or 55 oh. used to play? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, Gary, thank you, sir. Gary, thanks for the call. Uh, I, I don't know what he's going to do. I, and I haven't talked to Frankie in a couple of days. I haven't talked to him since he came back from Madison. Um, I don't know. He has options. Are you giving him his space? Um, I don't know. They're giving it. I, I mean, I don't ask him about I, it. I other than other than wherever he goes, I'd like some gear. Yeah. So I've given him my shoe size and my hoodie size. Hoodie, gotta get hoodie. Yeah. Always a hoodie. I did. I did say. You know what? It could be part of the deal. Yeah. Like the only way that you'll go to that specific school is if they hook up the uh, Omaha play by play guy. Yeah. Uh, would, you I don't would, you, would you wear Creighton gear then? Oh. You cut out there, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I know you want to be supportive of Frankie, but if, if, he, if he followed through on that and hooked you up with uh, maybe a, a powder blue Creighton hoodie, would that be donned in the, in the Sharp household or on air? I'd like some shoes. <laughs> those uh the the retro jordans are pretty sweet those are pretty sweet no. shoes and a hoodie i i just want any I, I just want him to go somewhere he is happy oh no i I, no, I know i i, know. I, do. I do and and this is what we're going to do and i'm going to do it for everybody because you're going to get to hear the process um and i want him to to say it more than me like when he chooses his destination, we'll have him on the air. 
it is wild. Some of the, and, and it is not the, the three in-state schools. Some of the stuff that people say to him, like of, you know, we want you and how we see you and the financial part of it. It's a whole different world. I mean, it, there are some people that have desperation written all over them. Um, but he has, uh, he has options and he'll make the right decision for himself. And I don't want to speculate on where he's going to go. I, I think he has a favorite. Um, I know that he wants playing time, a, a role that fits him, and he wants to go to the NCAA tournament. So that's kind of, you know, I mean, that, that, that isn't unrealistic. Uh, the timeline in terms of what, when he's going to make a decision, again, I think we're going to get to, we'll get a lot of activity after the Final Four. After April 12th, uh, or after April 11th, April 12th, when the dead period is over, you know, the stuff that maybe has happened that hasn't been public yet will start to come out. So I think we'll see some movement uh, then. Um, because, you know, people got to people gotta construct their roster. I mean, it's competitive. You're going back and forth trying to figure out, okay, is that guy going to stay? Is he coming back? What's going to go on? I got to get that guy. Um, so, you know, coaches, I, I, I get the feeling that coaches are more aggressive in the portal and they're asking for the sale. You know, I was telling you in sales, um, always be closing, ask for the sale. And I was a, ter- I was a terrible salesperson. Um, but I was like, okay, I'll use that. So, you know, like five minutes after my presentation, I'm going, hey, what do you think? So I was completely terrible in sales. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, but I'm noticing, I'm noticing more coaches. And I mean, there's, there's tampering going on. There's guys that are being contacted before the season even begins. Those are the players that get into the portal one day and the next day they've got their school picked. And you're like, whoa, that Zoom must have been pretty overwhelming. Right. Is is coaches like look at Nebraska, for example. Now Creighton is a little bit quieter. Um, you know, there's the list out there of nearly every guy that's in the portal will say, Hey, here's the 37 schools that have contacted me. Yeah. And, you know, Creighton shows up, Nebraska shows up. Um, Creighton is a little bit quieter, um, you, you know, in terms of of who they're going after, where they're going, if somebody's on campus. You know, like Nebraska, it's been pretty well known. They've gone up to North Dakota. They went to Illinois yesterday. Um, it just, I don't know, maybe maybe it's just because there's more attention to the portal. It just seems like coaches are more aggressive. Like just, they're, they're out there. Instead of kids coming to their campus, they're going to meet them in home. Like William Kyle is getting the same treatment. Yeah. You know, he came to the unofficial at Nebraska on Monday. There are people that are flying in to come talk to him in home, Iowa State, you know, so on and so forth. But coaches... Coaches seem like they're not waiting. You know, they've got a window here to reconstruct their roster and they don't want to beat by beat by somebody else. Look at hirings. Like USC is going to make a hire here pretty quick. Yeah. Because they can't afford to have more Bronny James leave their roster and not be able to bring in Bronny James. They got to get a coach in place. I think you've seen that through some of the kind of big profile jobs that have been open. Hey, we can't have this long process. We got a guy, we got to get a guy in here because He's got to be able to keep guys on a roster or bring guys in. It, the and if you don't do that, then what the hell are you doing? That's the the, the, the sense of urgency and the, the new reality for coaches. It, you can't you can't wait back. You can't just say, "Hey, cut! Well, uh, why don't you come out of here? We'll we'll show you around." You got to go out there. You got to be aggressive because that the amount of players that are going to impact your team, you're going to get to a certain point, and it's probably going to happen really quickly here in the next two weeks once we get out of the dead period, that that pool, as far as legitimate impact players, is going to diminish. So if you're not going out there, if you're not being proactive, you might lose out on that guy, but you can't look back and say, boy, if we would have shown him more love, we would have been more aggressive, if we'd been more proactive and we went out there and initiated all of that, maybe we would have had a better shot, shot at getting them. I mean, you got to explain that. You got to, th- this is, that's the reality of, of college athletics. And if you're not actively going and pursuing these players to make your roster better, are you doing your job? You think uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has been contacted? Oh, I bet he has. Oh, yeah. He's Do we expect him to see it in Indiana State? No. Which, by the way, Indiana State and Seton Hall are playing in the NIT final on Thursday at Hinkle. That's the a pretty Hinkle good match. Yep. Well, how, uh, Indiana State, nah, you shouldn't have been in the tournament. Seton Hall, ahead of Virginia? Yeah. Yeah, and they validated it in the NIT. They um, would have played well. But, but look at. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is going to be able to make a lot of money on the open market. Yep. Oh, he's leaving. 
He's got to be leaving. If he stays at Indiana State, I'll be shocked. Unless they unless they make a commitment to him and they say, we'll make you the highest paid mid-major player in college basketball. Not that that I, hasn't been already this year. I don't know what kind of dollars are rolling into Terre Haute. I don't know what they got. I don't I don't know what they can pull off there, but I, you, uh, I just assume they can be outbid. You uh, mispronounced the name of the town. Terre Haute? Terre Haute? Terra, Terra Dice. Because people that work and live there call it paradise. Oh, my <clears> God. <throat> I've been there. It's anything but... Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you it going, Rebecca? Is... On Albany, New York? <laughs> I, you know what? If that's a hot take, <laughs> all right, fine. Terre Haute is an armpit, man. So yeah. they have a cemetery behind the left field wall of their <laughs> Right. It's, I was just going to say it's that. Character. It's it's bleak, man. It's bleak. I've been to normal Illinois, for God's sakes, and that was beautiful compared to Terre Haute. Why are you crushing the Missouri Valley Conference? Uh, I could, in the MVC. I could give you a power rankings, and you know what's actually sneaky? Okay, Carbondale. Now that would have not been near the top of my list. It's sneaky. Okay, I didn't say it's good. It's sneaky. Okay, out of those three, out of Terre Haute, Normal, and Carbondale, I'd take Carbondale. What oh, a what a Normal, what a what a, got, what a Missouri Valley Conference used to have road trips to Omaha. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'd wind up in and St. Wichita. Louis. And Wichita. And yeah. St. Louis. You still get to go to Des Moines. But now you got it. Well, you yeah. now you get Nashville, but you got to go to Murray, Kentucky. Yeah, after your story, I'm good. Yeah, I yeah, I'm 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 good on that one. We're just gonna call this by recreating off the telegraph. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <this is great. laughs> uh, all right. Gosh, does the Missouri Valley Conference is catching strays? <laughs> Don't even don't even pretend that you thought Terre Haute was pleasant. It's no Evansville. Go Aces. Evansville movie film there. Terre Haute, no. <laughs> was the Deliverance, uh, according to Nick, uh, was the Deliverance filmed in Terre Haute? <laughs> uh, it was probably under consideration, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, according, uh, people, to you, according to you, it was in Murray, Kentucky. Um, yeah, that's a place where I think you got to be from there to understand it. Yeah. If you know, you know. Yeah, and if you live in the burbs of Murray, you don't understand it. Uh, <laughs> Clint, Clint is backing you up that Terra Terra Dice is uh, not a really nice place. Oh, it's bleak, man. I spent three days there. It was wow. that was two and a half more days than I needed to. Okay, all right. Well, we won't be uh, we won't be getting any love from Indiana State anytime soon. No, that's why. That's why I think uh, I think I think Cream can do better. This would be a time to announce that Sycamore Games will be on the zone next year. <laughs> Actually, that'd be on Zot. <laughs> yeah, we'd probably put that on Zot. Yeah. All right, Brandon Vogel is uh, coming up in uh, just a moment. It's Mornings with Sharp and Adley on 1620 The Zone. Gary Sharp, Nick Hanley, and Jimmy Chavez. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. Weekdays 6 to 10. On 1620 The Zone. 1620thezone.com You get a lot of junk in your inbox. This one, not junk. Not junk at all. 1620 The Email. Exclusive content, contests, other stuff probably. Subscribe today at 1620thezone.com your Omaha area forecast from a Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV Newswatch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Planning on a cool and windy Wednesday. There'll be some clouds around early, then giving way to tons of sunshine. Northwest winds, though, will be gusting around 40 miles per hour throughout the day with highs in the low 50s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV Newswatch 7. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. 
Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. What moves you? Whether it's running a race or playing with your grandkids, orthopedic specialists at CHI Health are dedicated to helping you keep life moving. We offer the latest surgical and non-surgical treatments, so you have options for painful shoulders, knees, hips, and every joint in between. Don't let joint pain put life on pause. Count on our team of orthopedic specialists to begin your journey back to what moves you today. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor, and Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports, ramp.com slash sports, R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Currents issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. Watching a ball game at Oscars Pizza and Sports Grill is pretty awesome. Oscars offers the MLB package, so your team is always on their upgraded audio video system, and nothing is better than watching the game with a cold frosty one, Oscars Pizza, or award-winning char-buffed wings. And with daily lunch and dinner specials, it's really a no-brainer. So get ready to watch your favorite team play ball at Oscars Pizza and Sports Grill, 173rd to West Center Road and take out at 162nd in Maple. Join me, Jimmy Allen, for the Creighton Athletics Hour. We'll be talking all things Blue Jays and interviewing your favorite coaches, so you don't want to miss it. It's the Creighton Athletics Hour Thursdays starting at 6 o'clock, only on 1620 The Zone, 1620 thezonecom and your 1620 The Zone mobile app. Tell us how you feel on the JTEC Construction and Solar Zone Twitter feed. Reach Gary, Nick, Connor, Josh, and John anytime on the JTEC Construction and Solar Zone Twitter feed. Contact the official exterior and solar experts of the Huskers. JTEC Construction at your exterioresperts.com. Now back to mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone. Tomorrow in uh, studio, uh, it is uh, Jet Award Day here in uh, Omaha. Uh, the big uh, banquet going on at Baxter Arena. Uh, Zachariah Branch is the winner from USC. Unfortunately, he will not be here uh, because USC would not allow him to come to Omaha for a day and accept the award as the top returner in college football from last year. USC is right in the middle of spring practice. Lincoln Riley wouldn't budge. Yeah, Pete would have. He wouldn't. Uh, he wouldn't let him uh, come here just for a uh, day. Uh, so, but uh, Danny Woodhead is the keynote speaker. Uh, Larry the Cable Guy is doing uh, some stand up uh, afterwards. Uh, I think there's still tickets available. But uh, all the guys, uh, the Jet. Uh, Greg Pruitt, Mike Rogier, they'll all be in studio uh, tomorrow. Uh, but I am maybe the one I'm most excited about. So they give out, I think they, I think they still call it the Legacy Award or something along those lines. Uh, Dewan Gross will be honored tomorrow night. Nice. So Dewan, we had punt returners. Well, he is. Uh, he had a, over a thousand yards in uh, returns in his career. Yeah. Um. Uh, one of my favorite Huskers. Uh. You know, went on to play a little bit in the NFL. Uh. But was a guy that was a great interview and and had like so many moments. I think, and it's kind of forgotten about a bit because of the way the game ended with the Jamal Lord interception. 2002, mm -hmm. Nebraska and Texas are playing. Good Texas team. Nebraska had no business being in that game, but somehow they were, and Dewan Gross was a huge part of it. Dewan Gross was great. I mean, he had 15 yeah. tackles in the game, um, but he had... The punt return, 44-yard uh, punt return at the end of the game that put Nebraska in a position to either win it or tie it. He got all the way down to the Texas 16-yard line. Memorial Stadium is going nuts because Nebraska is going to pull off an upset. Yeah. And also, Jamal Lord 
I know it ended with an interception to Jammer on the sidelines. Played a great game. Jamal tonight. Lord was incredible that mm-hmm. game. And that's a game where, God, Frank, just kick the field goal. Send the game to overtime. All the you know that Jamal is probably going to make a bad decision throwing the football or or just no throwing the football. Just tuck and run. They threw the football. Interception game over. Texas survives. Dewan Gross had a great game. Jamal Lord had a great game. I'm glad that Dewan is getting recognized uh, tomorrow night. But maybe my favorite moment of the Dewan Gross era at Nebraska has nothing to do with football. Do you know where I'm going here? No. So during the NCAA baseball tournament, uh, the Nebraska hosted in uh, at Buck Belzer, you know, like the, the players were the grounds crew, like the players took care of the field, but in the NCAA tournament, you can't have that. Okay. You can't have like tomorrow's starting pitcher out there between innings, raking the mound. Yeah. yeah. So they would hire football players <laughs> to go and change the bases. And, you know, back then the, the infield was uh, AstroTurf. So you yeah. just had the cutouts. So, you know, you got the football players are out there changing the bases the and money. they're, you know, they're raking the, raking, raking yeah. the, yeah. So Nebraska goes to the college world series and the final out caught by Will Bolt in shallow center field, they beat rice. And one of the great moments is Dewan gross runs on the field. Cause they told him don't, if the fans were on the field, don't let them steal the bases. So Dewan gross <laughs> like sprints out to second base. He grabs the base and then he's celebrating with it. He's dancing oh, that's out right. the field, holding the base, second base in the air, yeah. while the rest of the Oscar team is dogpiling behind him. It was great. Okay, was I do, now I remember. I forgot that that was Dewan Gross, but I do remember that now. Yeah, I didn't yeah. realize they were the grounds crew, though. Oh yeah, because you couldn't. Yeah, you you couldn't have you couldn't have the players yeah. like in taking care of the field, and so yeah, they hired. Uh, they hired uh, football players or athletes, and they were the grounds crew. <laughs> I wonder if Dewan Gross could – see, that's the thing if you get a chance to talk to him. Is he going to be in studio tomorrow or are you just going to see him at the uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Uh, hopefully he will be. You need to ask him what his raking ability is because that there's an art that goes to that, and that's something that you build up over time. I'm curious, though, if he was a natural. If, he's, if he was half the raker that he was as a punt returner and just a smooth operator, then – he could be on any any grounds crew. That, that yeah. that's that's so, that's so cool that that is why he was out there. Because now I do recall holding the base up and celebrating. And I remember people talk about, oh yeah, I I thought I thought now I, it kind of comes back that it was Dewan Gross. I didn't realize that's why he was out there though. Yeah, uh, his 2002 season as a defensive back and as a returner were pretty dang impressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's all coming up uh, tomorrow. Coming up next, Brandon Vogel from CounterRead.com. <laughs> Mornings with Sharp and Hanley on 1620 The Zone and 1620thezone.com with Gary Sharp and Nick Hanley. Now live on Twitch, YouTube, and 1620thezone.com. There is only one constant in the universe, and that's change. Brent Rasmussen of Mortgage Specialists. I'm sure many of you remember the incredibly low interest rates that were available only a few years ago. Well, things changed. Now rates are higher. But would you believe me if I told you there was a time when people were paying double-digit rates? And that's the thing. Everything changes. Rates go up. Rates go down. So if you're waiting for the perfect time when rates drop before you buy a home you might miss out on the home you really want. So when you think about it, what's a thing today might not be a thing tomorrow. See, change is good. I'm Brent Rasmussen. Call me at Mortgage Specialists and we can show you all the details. Mortgage Specialists, driven, trusted, reliable. Click mtg-specialists.com. And MLS number 5918, Equal Housing Lender. Trees, are they all the same? Not at Lanaha. Grown from a quality seed source, handcrafted in our local farms for generations, and acclimated to our tough Midwestern climate, Lanaha's trees are different. Simply put, they're better. Much like our trees, we take great pride in being homegrown. Visit our garden center to find your next tree today. Rooted in quality, unmatched value, Lanaha Nurseries. 192nd and Center. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. 
What's up? I'm tired of feeling so bloated. That used to be me. Then I got this. Aligned bloating relief plus food digestion. A probiotic, right? Yeah, it works naturally with your gut to help soothe occasional bloating and gas. Plus, it has vitamin B12 to aid digestion by helping convert food to cellular energy. Two benefits, one capsule. Aligned bloating relief plus food digestion from the number one doctor-recommended probiotic brand. Learn more at AlignedProbiotics.com. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. Email us on the Equitable Inbox with whatever is on your mind. The Zone Inbox is brought to you by Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. You can hit me up, agree, disagree, tell me your thoughts on life at Hanley at 1620thezone.com. We want to hear from you on the Equitable Bank Zone Inbox. Baseball season is here again. And Tickets for Less has another reason for you to root for the Royals all season long. When Kansas City scores seven or more runs in a game this season, you can get 7% off your next ticket purchase at ticketsforless.com. Simply use the promo code ROYALS7 at checkout the day after the Royals score seven or more runs to redeem your discount. But be sure to act fast. The code will expire at the first pitch of the next scheduled Royals game. Learn more today at ticketsforless.com slash Royals. And we're back. Mornings with Sharp and Handy. Here's Gary, Nick, and Jimmy on 1620 The Zone. Uh, quickly here, before we bring in uh, Brandon Vogel from counterread.com, uh, Steve Wolfong, who left uh, 24-7, is now at on three. Uh, his first, uh, I guess he's calling it an expert prediction, that St. Louis running back, a four-star, uh, Jamarian Parker, uh, will be a uh, Husker. Um, so we'll follow that. But, uh, yeah, Steve Wolfong, if you missed it, now at uh, on three. Uh, still at counterread.com, still doing fine work, is our good friend Brandon Vogel, who joins us now. Uh, good morning. Happy Wednesday. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Um, I, I We were just talking before we brought you on because Dewan Gross is going to be honored at the Jet Award Banquet here in Omaha uh, tomorrow night. And so I was sharing my favorite, my two favorite Dewan Gross moments, the Texas game in 2 and then uh, him being part of the grounds crew in uh, in uh, after the uh, 2001 uh, season uh, that they wanted to go to the College World Series, it reminded me we should just burn the 2002 season from the stripes on the pants to the way that season went. We should just get rid of the 02 season, just erase it from the media guide. <laughs> I, I could be I could be in for that. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a pretty key season i think when you look at everything that's happened to nebraska since then and then that's and that's the one that kind of shook the foundation of of the the solich era and i guess everything that was to come thereafter but um i i also remember that gross game against texas that year um that's that's certainly the moment that jumps out to me from from his storied career and you know it's interesting to to think about uh a guy like that to um you know consider the Jet Award, given the NFL's changes this week, um, which I think probably aren't aren't too long before we see changes like that coming to the college game. I I I, I agree. That's uh, maybe uh, maybe a year because the NFL is yeah. going to want people, either kickers or returners, to be prepared when they come to the NFL. Um, that phase is for a, a later discussion. I want to talk about defense because what was your reaction yesterday? We know that there's veteran guys coming back, and they have depth on the defensive line, which is a good start. But they're openly talking about wanting to be the number one defense in the country. What does the number one defense in the country to you mean? Is it stats? Is it optics? What is it? From a defense that, what, eight times last year, Brandon gave up less than 17 points? 
Yeah, I think that's right. Um, you guys, you guys know me too well because that's what I'm working on uh, for for the next newsletter from from me. And, and part of the question is there, like, how, how do you measure it? Um, and I think, particularly with defense, but but also with offense, like, I think anything you want to do needs to include points. So like, the yardage stats are good. Um, so on and so forth. Or you can take kind of a universal measure, whether that's FPI, SP plus, whatever. I was actually, I look at SP, SP plus every week uh, during the season, but usually at the, the overall number. Nebraska was sixth last year in defensive SP plus. Now, it was still behind four Big Ten teams in, in Georgia. So if you want to go the optics route, uh, become the best defense in the Big Ten, and you have a really, really good shot at being the best defense in the country. Uh, is this in reach for Nebraska? Yeah, I think it is. I think there's just, there's a couple of pieces that um, they need. Uh, kind of goes back to some, some other things I've written about this this spring. Uh, you don't maybe have that top line guy that you just did not, you know know right now. You need you need a couple of those probably to emerge. Honestly, the bigger thing might be you need more from the offense. Um, assuming the defense doesn't doesn't take a major step back, which I, I think is you know a safe assumption, but it's still a, an assumption at, at this stage. Tony White mentioned finding the five best members in the secondary and figuring out ways to get them on the field. What does that mean to personnel guys that we either have seen in the past couple of years, newcomers? What did, what did you take away from that remark and how that may look in the fall? Yeah. I mean, the fact that he right around that time also mentioned, you know, Hartzog is getting a look at corner. I mean, that's, that's really how they are. Um, I think in, in terms of that and a lot of, a lot of, Coaches and coaching staffs talk about that, but um, so far with what we've seen with this staff, it really is it is that because you know you could look at what Hartzog did and say, well, <laughs> no reason to mess with that. But hey, if it gives you a, gives you a better option at corner, um, so so personnel wise, I think it gives them gives them a chance to to be even deeper there. Like if you can move guys around, which we saw them do last year too, due to some injuries in season. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to remember cross trading was always, was always the big thing. Um, but there's, there's some reality to that. Um, if you, if you got a group of guys who can play any spot in the secondary, for the most part, nickel's a little bit different, um, in, in this scheme in particular, then, uh, you, you've got some pretty good depth and we've seen the number of guys that they've signed, uh, who are slated for the secondary. It's, it's a, it's a highly competitive group. What happened to Malcolm Hartzog? Ah, uh, good question. <laughs> um, you know, I it's he, he kind of got a little bit, I think, forgotten for for whatever reason because he was one of those guys that he pointed to as like trending up yeah. going into last year and shuffled around a little bit. Um, and, and to hear him, you know, hear them say, "Well, he might get be getting a look at, at corner again." Um, I don't, I don't really know, um, to be honest. I mean, it might be as simple as uh, some other guys. A, a guy like Singleton might, might be an example, really took advantage to, to a greater degree of, um, of a new staff, kind of a, a, a clean slate. Uh, it might be as simple as that, but that's, that's a really good question. I, I hadn't considered that much right now. Because I, he won't be, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I'm almost thinking that, Six foot three, Bly Hill is going to be opposite Tommy Hill as the other starting cornerback when UTEP rolls around in August. And Malcolm Hartzog is going to be a tweener guy, you know, maybe play safety, maybe play cornerback. Um, he's kind of working exclusively at safety. And here's a guy that after his freshman year, I thought, man, he's going to blossom. Is he going to be here for four years? And now he, he might be just, a, you know, regulated to an extra man on the field. Could be. Um, I mean, it's it's tough thinking back to that that freshman season with the the, the talent that was on display, but um, you know those things are always kind of possible too with a with a new staff who's maybe and a staff that I think we we can put in that category of is like detailed to the degree where they they probably have like measurables they're looking at by position. Um, a lot of college programs do that, but not all of them. Um, and you find a guy 
who who maybe hits those and, and give him a chance to compete. And uh, all of a sudden you, you've got a really good player who just just might have got jumped a little bit. A lot of people are always going to and we get it. They're going to point to the inside linebacking position with Luke Reimer, Nick Henrich gone. It, it, again, he was brought up yesterday. Now, it, it was it was Tony White who mentioned him. But in Stefan Thompson, what his adjustment has been like, Matt Rule was a little more critical. Tony White seemed to be OK with, you know, how he's he's mixing in right now. How important is it to have Stefan Thompson up to speed and to be a big part of that group in the fall, in your opinion, given what he already knows in the system and knows through Tony White? Yeah, taking taking those two comments you mentioned sort of in tandem, um, because because Rule usually makes it pretty clear when he's asked about a specific guy and he, he needs the guy to maybe get up to speed on on sort of how they do things, quote unquote. Um, he, he, he makes that known. So, so I think the advantage with, um, with Thompson is he, he should be pretty close to up to speed already in theory. Um, so I, I don't think the on field piece of it is, is the, the big issue. It's more just kind of adjusting to, you know, somebody like banks from, from wake forest, a wide receiver, we hear the opposite. Like he came yeah. in and it was just like, yep, I got it. I'm, uh, I got what you're looking for coach, uh, in terms of everything. Um, some other guys we've with a couple of transfers. Now we've heard eh, they're still, <laughs> they might still be, still be figuring that piece of it out. So there, there's a lot of time there. Um, the spring session can help with that. It, it probably helps a guy like Thompson more than, than the reps he's going to get. Although it's important, you know, to, to play with a new group of guys, of course, so I think he'll be okay. Um, I think how important is it? Um, I don't know. Maybe a six and a half, seven out of ten. Like I think, I think you'd want him to be uh, yeah. be among your your leaders at, at linebacker, which is which is probably the biggest question marks on the defense. Um, that said, if you if you don't get him, well, you know. You didn't have him be, before the transfer portal either. So um, I think Nebraska has shown enough, you know, it's only a season, but about bringing the young guys along and, and making sure that they're ready. Brandon Vogel from counterread.com. Great stuff to begin the week. Uh, Aaron Sorensen on Troy Dannon. And then uh, Brandon has a very interesting and a good question in college football right now to spring game or not spring game. Um, if you look at how Minnesota approaches it compared to Nebraska. I want to circle back to something you brought up about the defense. There's going to be, I think, very few new faces on the front line of the defense. So there's a comfort level there. But when you say we want to be the number one defense, it can't be just because we're veteran. How much of it is Nebraska truly believes that their quarterback play will be head and shoulders above where it was last year? That leads to a DC throwing out that expectation. Good question. I think in reality, I think the QB QB part of it is 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 big, um, and just offensive efficiency in general. Um, for Tony White to say it, you know, that you can maybe chalk up to it's like, well, I'm the defense coordinator. Why? Obviously, we want to try and be the best. Why shouldn't we? Mm-hmm. And when you were as close as Nebraska was, and in, in a lot of the categories that I think are pretty important. Uh, yeah, you can you can say that. It still kind of gave me a little jolt yesterday of like, oh, really? Like, okay. Um, even though it makes sense in theory in ter- from like a motivation angle. So um, maybe internally, maybe if you got to sit in the coach's room with all all eleven of them there um, instead of just talking to to the defensive staff on Tuesday and then get some offense guys a couple guys li- a couple days later. I think that is a real part of it. Um, and. I'll be interested to kind of dig into that a little bit more because uh, there, there's a couple couple of angles angles to it. But Nebraska just played, you know, really good like broad based defense. They, they uh, maybe you know didn't didn't have a ton of stars necessarily, which is impressive. You know, I mentioned SP plus Nebraska was sixth, four Big Ten teams ahead of it: Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State. Those are three teams. Like, just look at who they sent to the combine. All more talented than than Nebraska. So that's a piece of this. Iowa's in there. Um, a little more talented, but you're getting closer to even there. 
Um, so once again, if we want to talk about Nebraska and its defensive ceiling in 2024, uh, kind of feels like Iowa might be, might be the model that's most replicable, which, which has been the case, I think for Nebraska for a while. Is there a likely all American candidate on the defensive side of the ball? Great question. Um, nobody I would identify today. But if you're going to be that type of defense, if you're going to be where Iowa, Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan were last year, um, you kind you're going to have one. <laughs> and it's like, you know, it's it's a little chicken or egg of like, oh, is this guy an All American because the defense was that good, or was the defense that good, so on and so forth. Um, you know, you, you would need a season, uh, and, and I think the top candidates are probably on the on the defensive line um, in terms of Ty Robinson, Nash Hutmacher in particular. Um, maybe one of those guys we saw play as a true freshman just has a, has a bonkers statistical season in terms of TFLs and sacks that could, that could help get you there. Maybe you have an option or two in the secondary, but again, it, you know, that's one where like the stats need to be so good because yeah. the thing you don't have, um, is, is guys who come in, uh, with the name recognition of like, oh, I'm going to look to see if this guy deserves to be an all American, um, you know, starting in September. Yeah, great stuff. Brandon, we appreciate it as always. Uh, always enjoy uh, the read on counterread.com. And uh, now you got work to do after uh, finding out how to become the number one defense at Nebraska. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a good week. That's uh, Brandon Vogel. That'll do it for the uh, show. Nick, have a uh, safe trip down to Arizona. Enjoy your uh, vacation. We'll uh, see you in uh, six weeks. All right. So, hey, whoa, whoa. Oh, all right. Six weeks. All right. I'll see you, guys in, see you guys in a week. In fact, I'll be back on Masters Thursday. How about that? No. Oh. Well, at least you didn't say, "Hey, I'm going away for maternity leave." No, first of all, we don't we don't get paternity leave. That's what. Oh, paternity, paternity leave. That's right. Uh, Mike Schaefer did. Schaefer will be back. He's off of paternity leave. He'll be back on Friday. All right. We don't get that. That's why I haven't had kids. Yeah. No. Uh, a mean, lot of a lot of companies I've noticed they do give I, like two months for and it's paid. You can you can take twelve weeks technically, Gary, yeah. but you have to pay for it. NRG Media, we get off President's Day, but not for paternity. <laughs> if you have kids, uh, have them priorities. sign up for emails. All about hey, the priorities. Have fun. We'll uh, see you next week. All right. Sounds good. Uh, for Nick, for Jimmy, I'm uh, Gary. Uh, we're back tomorrow at uh, 6 and a step closer to the uh, Final Four for the men and women, which you'll hear all right here on 1620 The Zone.